online. Welcome to another episode of the Big Blue Tent Podcast. Come in, get comfortable. All are welcome here. The views from Gups and Aiden are strictly for entertainment purposes and should not be mistaken for facts. 30 seconds until round one. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Boo Temp Podcast, episode 15. It's Wednesday the 9th of August 2017 and you're listening to Matt Guppy and Aidan Burke of the Big Blue Tent. Hi Aidan. Hi Matt, how you doing? Yeah, I'm all good mate. I'm all good. How are you? I'm not too bad mate. It's lo- lovely weather. Picked up again. Nice and sunny. Yeah, maybe for you. It's been uh, pretty drizzly down here. But um, before we go and get into all of that... Let's say a quick thanks to all of the sponsors of the Big Blue Tent. That's number five RC, Mike Parker, up in the northwest. Yay, double yay for Mike Parker. Thank you very much. Uh, CML Distribution, getting some help off of Russ Lee on a secret project at the moment that we're having a few conversations about, but that will all become apparent in time. Um, RC Octane, of course, we've got John Finch down in the southwest and... Nuclear RC, that's Alan Painter for glues and acetones. And of course, DTS Apparel Chris Streams for his designs, that's thick. And you can find all of those on their own Facebook pages or through the Big Blue Tank group or page. And of course, don't forget to like and share the podcast if you're having a listen. We really, really do appreciate all of the likes, all of the shares, all of the listens that we're getting. So thanks very much to Everybody for all, all of your feedback, very well received every, every week uh, when the podcasts go out. Um, and yeah, we've, we've been, as always, blown away by the response every week. Yeah, to be honest, I think we could do some more negative reviews. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Uh, that'd because be great, I'm kind of getting a bit big-headed. No, I'd love it. I'd, I'd love it. I haven't, I haven't um, had anybody call me anything ridiculous for quite a while now, so... Uh, yeah, bring yeah. it on. Uh, bring it on. It's, it's all been a bit positive. So if there's anything that we don't do or we do that annoy people, let us know that. We can um, ignore you. Um, but it'd be fun to share some of those, I think. It would. It'd be great to read out some of the negative uh, reviews. We obviously won't name anybody, but if they are funny, of course we will yeah. We will let you know. Yeah. Um, and and as, as ever, thanks very much to Live RC for sharing oh. the sharing the posts we really really appreciate those as well um and of course we we do our best to share things when we see them come up on on our stuff for you guys as well but thanks very much for that guys and uh if we can get around to doing some race reports for the both of us we will let you know as soon as we can yeah yeah we had a, I had a good chat with um mike and aaron from live rc over email mm-hmm. regarding because they've been great they have been great for us um you know that's the, certainly the new site I look at um, and they've mentioned us many times hmm. um, and we're trying to work with them see if we can get some other UK stuff on Live RC so we've, I've, I've had a quick chat with them regarding what we can do um, to make it easier for them yeah. um, and then oh I'll tell you what we forgot our other sponsor okay yeah we forgot our well the podcasts and my latest Sponsor, Carl Marsden from Kyosho Europe. Oh, okay, okay, right, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, th- that's obviously had nothing to do with with me. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah. So, um, I, I've got a Kyosho. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've got a, a Kyosho and a Kyosho in a box. Believe me, I, be- I, I think everybody on this show and. Listening in knows you've got a car show at the moment, but we're, we'll get there. But uh, before we do go too far into your latest purchase, we'll say at the moment, mm-hmm. um, 
uh, I just want to say a uh, a quick thanks to Bobby and Jeff as well from the Loopers Live because at the very start of this they they helped us out massively. So uh, if you are looking for another podcast to listen to, don't forget to get on over to those guys and have a listen. It is all if you if you are into your eighth Nitro stuff, they are the the guys to have a have a listen to. Um, but yeah, thanks to you guys as well. Sorry we missed you. I don't know whether you guys were just busy with a race meeting or not this this week. But um, yeah, sorry we missed you again. Yeah, uh, I think their last it was yesterday or last night. They were chatting about obviously um, Bobby's really happy that um, Moving won the one eighth Euros, mm-hmm. um, and also that JQ had caused them some discussions. <laughs> Uh, and they and they love having a discussion with JQ, so I think they, they do. fully went into, into that. I, I haven't got, I haven't actually got to that bit. Um, their their podcast, like ours, is really long, so <laughs> it, it, it takes me a couple of tries to get through even ours. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. It's worth a listen though if you get time to do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that that's obviously the first thing we want to we want to touch on what what was your what was your thinking behind that I'm, I'm guessing the um big turnout in the nationals and the great results they've been having so far has been uh been obviously a big draw for you to go towards towards kyosho mate um well i think they've realized that maybe they're not putting enough people in national a finals mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to solve that problem clearly they've come to me yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. Are they um they having trouble getting people in B finals as well in the nationals. Um, C, I don't C know. Finals? I, 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 well, one of the things is I don't know many uh, of the oh, wait, drivers. I think uh, any, Ben Pugh was any finals. <laughs> There were many Kyosho drivers at the nationals at Southport. Many, well, then, many okay. Kyosho. Okay, good. They now it makes a bit more sense why I was a bit going oh what's one of them mm. why have you got one of them thinking why is this crazy man taking the shell off my KO show well the the great Tony Parr drives one I believe the great Tony Parr drives a KO show mm. um, I've got uh, Nick Caro up in the northwest, always driven a KO show mm-hmm. I think he's as KO show as you are team associated yeah um, I think the people I've spoken to are you know, you know with a, like a lot of these things there's like little Facebook groups um, so I think the Facebook group that I've been added to, I think they're regretting it already. Clearly, mm, mm, mm. Um, they would. Is, uh, yeah, it's a lot of. I'm going to say it's very eastern based. So I think it's a lot of northeast and mid east. Oh, the northeast! Um, I'm sure the northeast boys will be welcoming you with with open arms. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a story. In, because into their easy region. Easy hashtag northeast easy region. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes, that did come up. I, I, I thought I'd get it out straight away, as I like to do. Mm-hmm. P.S. Guys, yeah, I said it was an easy region, um, the northeast, and then a few of them said, "All oh, right, oh yeah, we heard someone had said that. We didn't know who it was." And I'm going, "Well, that was me." Mm-hmm. Hashtag northeast easy region. Yeah, I can see um, you getting all the good setups. Oh yeah, it, I've, I've been flooded with offers of help. Yeah, um, I'm sure you have. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> Why is this weird though in our group? I, after a bit, I did sort of sit there and stop and go, hang on, I'll leave you alone now. Mm. So I'll give them a couple of days. Um, there's a, a few people I kind of know, one or two I've met before. Um, hopefully, I think, you know, it, it's not just KO Show, it's you're working with Mike Parker at number five RC. Mike is the one who's always been saying how he enjoys his, he thinks it's a great car. He He's well supported by. Um, I think the way they split Kyle Show or FDL, whatever it is, is that Carl Marsden runs the sort of electric off road and Mick Craddock runs the 1 8 stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, certainly Carl Marsden, I think, yeah, again, like Joshua, never heard of him. Um, <laughs> but he's come back, to, <laughs> being honest, no point lying. But I think he's come back to 110 and has been yeah. quite well. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, to to be fair, from what from what I've seen of it, very much like the YZ2 for for any sort of intermediate driver out there, it's a fantastic car. And as soon as yes. they hit that wall, and yep. they want to they want to compete, then they you know like like all the all the really good drivers do they they come to associate. But I can understand why you've gone you've gone there, mate. 
you know, the the YZ2 for you was getting a bit, maybe a bit two years, stale. two and a half, uh, maybe a bit stale for for you and yeah. and and your sort of the way you work things and that you know, I, I know the way you 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 do stuff on a race day and the way you want your car to work and yeah, I think maybe something fresh was a was a good move for you. Whether whether this is going to work for you or not, who knows? It'll be interesting to see over the over yeah. the coming weeks so, and especially at the end of season finals in a in a few weeks yeah the end of season finals F, um, September the 9th is two wheel drive September the 10th it's at Kidderminster mm-hmm. Kidderminster have just put a load of pictures on Facebook 10 mm-hmm. minutes ago mm-hmm. about how what they've done to tidy the track up but I know they've got a few bits to to do um, really looking forward to that yeah, you know the northwest. Are, I think we're trying to fit twenty-one people in, so we're coming down with a. It's not really that far, it depends to really for any of us, um, with a with a decent team. Okay, well that's um, good. That's good. You'll need it. Well, yeah. Uh, clearly, the secret to winning these is good <clears throat> people returning. Mm. Mm. So you know we've got Nick Caro, Gab Crawler, Adam Perry, but the problem is they're already ranked as F twos. Yeah, one point nine. So that so I think our secret weapon will be the beautiful Tim Rawcliffe. Yeah, where does he sit now? I'm pretty sure he must be in F five now. Okay, well Tim's gonna Tim's Tim's blatantly gonna win the F fives. Sorry, yeah, every, every uh, other F five that is planning on turning up and hoping to win, but Tim Tim is a well, in, incredibly is good driver. Uh, the likelihood of him not winning the F fives is is minimal. Um, and he is very beautiful. Somebody else turns up, and I mean, yeah, a lot of it will be that he will just stand up there and look beautiful um, and drive around the track, whilst whilst everybody kind of goes, "Wow, that guy's really, really good looking." Oh yeah, we're well, racing. He, he needs that because I think he'll be driving a Durango, won't he? Will he drive a Durango or will he drive his B4? Mm, I think he'll probably because he's. I'm pretty sure I'll probably drive a Durango. Surely a mid-motor Durango is better than a rear-motor B4. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, remember when we had Durangos, and we all had Durangos at one point at Southport. Mm. You're um, telling me there was no one with the B4 that used to beat you when you had a Durango? Yeah, Derek would have, yeah. Okay. So, you know, maybe not, maybe not. Well, the, the last time he's come back, he's raced his Durango. Yeah, so yeah, he so, was very good indoors with it. Yeah. There was Sorry, a um, who was driving the Durango in the nationals? I'll tell you what. There was a Durango in the A final of the international last weekend. No. Mhm. The ugliest car known to man, and I'm I'm marshalling. So I got in the B. Um, I'm mm-hmm. marshalling the A final, looking at that thing, going. I don't know how that that got there, really. Well. Well, I, I make think sure we get it right. The Durango 210F mm. is the most ugliest car in the world. Oh, hideous. You know, the four-wheel drive are all great. Do you know? I don't. I don't think as a as a two-wheel drive, they're a particularly bad two-wheel drive. I really don't. I think they are. They are quite a good car. Um, <sighs> I just think the the. <laughs> the, the body shell and the, the look of it needs a needs a bit of work, but um, looks like I've maybe, done that's, it maybe that's just my taste. Yeah, it, it's not. I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Let, let's just say that. I'm sure people enjoy it. There was clearly one or two people in the country are doing well with them. Mm, they are. They are without a doubt. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to know who they are. I yeah, don't know who was yeah, driving that at the weekend. So if you know, if kind of, so we've picked on serpents enough. So if you know anybody who drives a Durango, just let us know. We'll get them on and ask him why. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I'd like to know why. Yeah, because the, we same, the same, you. the same as I'd like to know why anybody would drive a Lozzie, and of course, hence why we invited Brian on the uh, on the show. I'm still yet to hear from him about a date. You know, or maybe well, I'm maybe. If uh, Ellis Stafford hears it, maybe maybe Ellis would be happy to stand up, uh, stand up, and and come on the show and, and have a chat to us about Lozzie and what the the plans I've, are in the UK. I've, I've spoken to Biggie. I've spoken to Ellis Stafford. Ah, oh, okay. But 
unfortunately, Wednesdays aren't great for him. He was really up for it, and he went, yeah, when do we do it? And I say, we do it on a Wednesday night. And he goes, oh, shit. Mm. Um, that, he, he said, Wednesdays aren't great, but he'll think as soon as he gets a free Wednesday, so I don't know what he does on a Wednesday, if anybody knows what Ella Stafford does on a Wednesday, that'd be great to know. I'd, um, I'd certainly like to know. <laughs> let's follow him, let's talk him. <laughs> You know, uh, let's not make ladies. let's not make your your shirt say "I love Ellis" instead I, of "I, I love Lee." So, what's going to happen? What are you going to get put on your um, hoodie now? Because you've got "I love Lee" on it at the moment. So, are you going to get this changed to um, "I love I love I love some so, car show driver so, that I don't know some yeah, other I, some top I love car T-Bow. show driver." T-Bow. Yeah, oh, I love Elliot Boots. There you go. Um, no, I, I, I'll still have "I love Lee." Because I do lovely. I still lovely. Oh. I lovely when he drove a Tamiya. He that was a difficult time. He sent time me a message lovely. when just after you posted that. Um, I didn't post that. Let's let's start with that as well. I never posted that. Okay, well, just after Stephen Ball posted the picture of you with your new car, and Lee Mark sent me a message in the Kyosho group, and just it, it was just a single four-letter word. And one of those sad crying emoji faces. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, was, I'm sure he's he most okay. upset. Um, I'm sure he's okay. I I think Kenny Mock wants me to return most of my Lee memorabilia. <laughs> um, I think you should just out of um, out of respect, I, really. No, I, I, I've all got the a things full of you've paint. said about Yokomo and Lee and. All of that over the years. What are we supposed to believe? That was just all rubbish. Now and that. The, <laughs> what, what is it? I mean, make your mind up. Do you, do you want to drive a? Is, was the Yokomo really a crap car? Is that what you're saying? Because of the move. I've, I mean, this is this is really confusing for everybody, mate. We thought you were we thought you were Yokomo through and through. Uh, Lee I, put I time love, and effort into you, and what have you done? You've basically you have slapped you have slapped a six time European champion. <laughs> In the face with a with a car show. I, I, okay, I'll show I'm, RZ6, yeah. I'm really, really surprised at your actions, buddy. That's all. I don't know how anybody listening to this podcast could ever trust you again. Well, I think over time, mm. people people will see yeah. how much I still love Lee. I hope um, so. I, actions I hope speak so. louder than words. Um, I. Lovely a lot. Um, Kenny's, you know, disappointed. Mm. Yeah, but but he now knows how much I love Lee. Had you and just had enough of the really cheap plastic? Was that what it was? I have never broken a bit. Oh, except that rear arm. Yeah, on a on a yoke. That's yeah. all I broke. <laughs> one year, one rear arm. And to be yeah. honest, when people talked about when someone said, "Oh." He's got mm. an RB6 or an RZ6. Mm. People said, buy a lot of front arms. Mm. So, I haven't even got my RB6.6 built. It's being built by Felix tomorrow. So, is Felix... It? Did you get yes. an RB, RB6 or RB, RZ6, whatever it is? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of yeah, names but... for this, basically what looks to me like the same car. Um, did you Did you get that because you got tired of being whooped by me and Borley for the last two years at Oopal? Was that another reason for it? I mean, do you, do you think this is going to change your fortunes to a point where you, you'll have a shot at the trophy next year? Well, well, hopefully. I don't think it's... It certainly wasn't the yoke holding me back. Everyone mm. else... I did really well. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my mm-hmm. best season ever when I had a yoke and everyone else had a normal mid-motored car. Mm. Mm. Um, that was a great season. Yeah. Um, many Southport A finals. Um, when everyone else was driving a mid motor or a rear motor car, and I had this three gear lay down thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not saying uh, a change of car is going to make me any better. I haven't even ran the new car. I thought um, you ran it out the uh, out the weekend. I, I, ra- I ran my RZ6. Oh, okay. And how was that? That was awesome at points. It, I didn't have a great day. Right. Um, I, every so often I drive it. Well, I drive it for a bit, and then it, just, it wouldn't stop. 
but it like it lost power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would get just about. Get that with the uh, get that. RZ6 here. Yeah, yeah. Just well, to be honest, that, 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 that's exactly what Evo said. Yeah, yeah, a lot uh, of them Evo. just come to a complete halt for no reason. Evo put, Evo, <laughs> TQ, the Southport National, the mm. last time, not the last time, the time before, maybe the time before that, it was at Southport. Yeah. With a shaft driven hybrid KO show car that him and Tony <laughs> Parr made. Yeah, okay. Uh, but he goes, he goes, but they just wear out. Um, so as long as you keep replacing your know, drive shafts and out drives, mm. specifically on the, from the centre slipper back to the gearbox, um, it's great. It was great. Oh, when it worked, and my, all my issues were, the, I didn't know what my issues were. People thought it was like maybe a, a tight drive change. I shimmed the gearbox out a bit, and mm. it seemed to be better, and but then it stopped again, and I had one decent run, and then it stopped again. But when it stopped again, Felix picked the top of the car. I said, come on, just turn it off, turn it back on again, see if that fixes it. And as he did, the end bell, end plate of my motor was not attached to my motor. And was swinging around, just attached by a sensor wire and mm. the three power leads. So that's why it didn't work. Once I rebuilt all that, I was very impressed with myself. I rebuilt that motor. Um, it was fine. Got a six in round. It's mm, um, very nice. For anyone doesn't know, anyone doesn't know an RZ6. It's a one well, of those hybrid two wheel drive front, four wheel drive backs on. And so my old X-ray was a bit like that. And then the first thing I noticed is come down that full straight, we ran the same track, which was down the week before for the two-wheel drive national. So the full length of Southport straight, and then a hard right hand, more than 90 degrees. And the car was just so flat, and you could just do it so quickly. It was it was immense. Mm. It was immense. Well, but then I'll, as soon as as soon as it rained, it got slippy and it was awful. I'll tell you one thing we could do because you know we spoke to Dr- Craig Drescher the other week about um, about the lap times between him and Neil being half a second different. Yeah. Well, how about we get Neil Craig on and right. we have a chat to him about your lap times and his lap times. At the on the Southport National Track, uh, yeah, it'd be great. That I don't know what my lap times were though. I think I was around twenty four seconds. Okay, okay. I'm uh, pretty sure they were going a little bit quicker than that at the National. Hopefully, you were all on the same sort of dry conditions and everything. Um, but yeah, the the first of the guests that we've got coming on tonight is uh, Neil. Craig from Team Associated CML, uh, and you know we are talking a one tenth off road world champion back in two thousand and five, uh, nine time European champion. I think he's two behind Drescher at the moment. Uh, Twenty one time UK BRCA one tenth off road national champion. Um, and I think what was it was he said he said seventy nine consecutive A finals at national level, and you know obviously many 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 more achievements other than that. Um, but we would like to welcome him to the show. So let me see if I can find him on the list here, and see if we can get him in. Oh, hello. This is where we just hello. say hello a lot. Oh. Hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. How are you doing? How are you doing, mate? You all right? Bloody hell, you came up really quick then. I'm not used to anybody coming into the call that quickly. We normally have a t- about 10, 15 minutes of cut-out podcast where we're just messing about going, uh, are you still there? Who's there? <laughs> How you doing, man? You all right? Yeah, not too bad yourself. Yeah, good. I'm good, mate. I'm very, very good. Um... I, I, before do you know what, before before I go into it, I have got a message from Dave Belston wanted to say that he he loves and misses you very much. Oh, I miss him too. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be he'll be back at some point, man. He'll be back at yeah. some point. How were the uh, How were the Euros then? All good? 
Yeah, not too bad. It was uh, tough going, as it always is, but uh, I say it's skill racing, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how are you finding the the 3.1? Oh, it's good. I think the car's uh, pretty good. You no, know, it's uh, pretty competitive, and you know we have good sales now. So, uh, well, better sales than what we used to have. Yeah. Especially in Europe, because it's always a market that we look into. We've always, you know. We work well, especially like Craig and the guys. They they push hard to, to try and break into that. So mm. it's good to have a couple of the top guys running it, like like Ongaro and stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. Without they, without without doubt, they you can find... push it in. They they can push it in their country, and uh, you know, and it can only help. Do you think it's picking up much in the in the UK then? Uh, yeah, it is. I think the, the, like at the nationals. Uh, well, even regionally as well. Uh, uh, the uh, the team's pretty good, the CML team, you know. Mm. It's not too bad at all. So, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely on the up, I think. How, m- how many have you got of the eight scales that turn up for the team? Well, for the team... Yeah, yeah, just just sort of roughly. How, how many have we got sort of representing for for associated CML when when you got the eight scales going on? Well, yeah, well, it just in, in, in the team at the Nationals, off the top of my head, I could think of maybe... We have, like, a good ten drivers... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That all 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 pit together. So, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 uh, it's doing pretty well. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, do you, do you still think you've got sort of more to find in it then, or do you think you're you're kind of pushing the limits of it already? No, I'm. Uh, I don't think I can find much more. I think I'm on the I'm on my way down now. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, Who who's he, up and coming for you then in the in the team? Who's the, who's the next young driver we should be looking out for when uh, we're, when you're doing the, um, the the vintage classes? Yeah. We uh, well, I mean, I have we have a kid called Jamie Clancy who's a uh, you know he's an associate driver from England. Who's yeah yeah. Who's who's a who's a young and up and coming lad. Uh, you know, he, he does a lot of racing, a lot of practice, which is only going to help him. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully you can, uh, you know, push on to some better things in the future. But it, it, to be honest, though, the whole the whole scale, you know, eight scale, it has a lot of, a lot, a lot more, especially a lot more than ten scale. It has a lot more up and coming drivers. Okay. Right, so, you know, like, they have a really nice, like they have a really nice spot of like and there's like, like a fifteen to an eighteen year old kids. There's like there's like ten of them. They're all really good friends and and they're. Right, well, okay. the all step make air finals now, so right, okay. It's, uh, it's, it's good. It's good to see, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's good. It's good to hear that that's happening. Um, it's not, you know, it's not really. In I mean, in the tenth scale thing, I'm I'm sort of starting to see a, a few kids sort of co- starting to come through a bit, but you know, it's just just not the sort of numbers you'd you'd expect for it, considering how many of us there are. Out there doing it. I mean, you know, I suppose you are seeing, starting to see more parents bring their kids along, but you know, as far as good, I don't know, like you say, fifteen to sort of eighteen year olds out there. I think you, you're sort of really struggling for numbers with the in the in the tenth scale side of things, generally, really. Yeah, I I agree. I uh, we're always mean, we're always looking for the next big thing, and mm-hmm. there's not there's not many. Uh, you know, there's, there's not there's a few out there, but there's not a lot. There's you know, you wish there was more mm. young guns yeah. coming through. To be honest, you know, the nationals. Well, you are a bit of an old man now. How old are you? I mean, I know I only look like twenty four, twenty five. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm it's the sunglasses. Now. It's the sunglasses. Yeah, that's man. it. That's it. <laughs> Aiden wants to know so, where you got them from. Got them off the internet, mate. Oh, well, okay. Go. I, just I, mean, Ray, the, I think the Ray Bands. I'm a bit of a Ray Band fan, so uh, right, okay, yeah, you, yeah. Like, I had a lot of comments about him at the Euros. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Cause I, I, you had the same ones on uh, the One Tenth Nationals at Southport, didn't you? Yeah, that's the ones. Yeah, yeah but for some reason, they, they, it, no one really noticed. But you go I to know, the Euros, yeah. and we just go. I'm sorry, Neil. They are the campest pair of sunglasses I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was well, talking to you for. Days, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. You know, we thought the pink shorts were, you know, a, a yeah, brave move. They're not pink. 
Uh, no, the man, salmon. they're pink. The salmon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, trust me, I'm sat here in an Everton kit, an old Everton kit, which is um, pink, uh, but I think Everton called it salmon. So I, I, I'm a big fan, but, um, you know, some of your short choices. <laughs> I don't know were, what's worse there. Oh, the, pink, well, the pink shirt or an Everton shirt. You see, <laughs> see we can talk about football, <laughs> but, you know, Gubbs yeah, just have no idea. Gubbs have no idea. <laughs> you know, you're Manchester United, you're our northern cousins. So, yeah, uh, that's it. We all like Liverpool, so but we, we can speak, but there's, there's, there's kind of none of that. You go to RC and talk about football, and people go, oh, don't, don't follow that. Yeah, it is quite a rare it. thing. A couple of, a couple of like Tom Yard is a big, uh, big United fan, so I always like talk to him about it and stuff like that. Hey, I'll tell yeah, you what, but, if, yeah, you are, if you are, if you are a, uh, if you are a football fan, the uh, Tommy Tansley runs a fantasy football league. Yeah, he does. Can, yeah, it's an RC yeah. fantasy football league. If you want to get in on that one, <laughs> I always, I would always love to get that, and I always started at the, I always did it at the start of the season, but then. I just get I get lost or I get busy <laughs> and I forget about it and then yeah. it ends up just Neil, not happening. You fit in. You fit in. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> if, 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 if I'm not top in the first week, fuck it. Don't care. Um, yeah, that's it. Not interested. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So as long as you take the top two or three, and literally there is a, a load of guys who work at NASA in this <laughs> fancy <laughs> football. Literally, there are rocket Bloody scientists yeah. in oh. this. The mates of Tommy's are yeah met at Southport um, and his brother-in-law's literally are rocket scientists and they've got formulas and there's other guys here who you know would tell you who Andrew Rob- whether Andrew Robertson was fit uh, <laughs> you know what I mean those kind of stuff Bloody no I just, I just I'm still in fact I think I put Lukaku in my side um, uh, I still think he'll score loads but I'm now feeling that Guppy's giving me evils over the internet no 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 <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, got, I've, was, I've got no idea reaction. Tommy does mind. Yeah. Tommy does yeah, mind. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, Gup, Gup beats everyone, and he has no idea what a footballer is. <laughs> um, so, and that has taken me off a bit of a tangent because I have no idea what I was going to say. Um, you're going to talk more about uh, toy cars. That's what you're going to do. Yeah, I was going to talk more about more about toy cars. About being, did you say you were 34? Yeah. Yeah. So, how many years you got left at the top? I don't know to be honest. Uh, I try well. I try not to think about it too much, but as long as you know the sponsors are still happy, and as long as I'm still mm. competing, yeah, uh, you know. Okay. I, I don't. I never really. I never want to make up numbers. Well, so, yeah. as long as I'm still, as long as I'm still competing to some some extent, that's good enough for me. Do you think that you'd be able to compete at a higher level if you dropped a class and concentrated on one? more do you think it will get to that point where you'll go do you know what i i, I just want to concentrate on this one now and do well at this one because uh, you know yeah. we, we spoke to craig the other week and he said he wishes back back when he was doing it that he dropped certain classes and just concentrated on his his i think it was his 10th off-road stuff he wishes he'd done more of um yeah do you think you, you'll get to a point where you go, do you know what, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do the 10th, or I don't want to do the 8th, or I don't want to do this, or or whatever it is, and I just want to make the most out of what whatever speed I've got left and whatever good time I've got left at the very top. Because, you know, there, there aren't many that are going to compete with you at the end of the day on a 10th scale track. Um, is, is that something you'd look at doing or is it is that you, do you yeah, just want to race I mean, everything I think you pretty much have to do it you know I mean even now I'm, it's such a struggle these days and Craig mm-hmm. is right Craig always tells me if you concentrated on one thing you'd be a lot better but we want to win at everything right yeah well, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's, I mean especially against the I mean you got guys now who, who they can race pretty much full time non-stop and one class as well especially in the 8 scale class yeah that's all the top guys do, and it is uh, it is difficult, but you know it's the choices we make. So, I mean, I'm a tenth scale guy, always have been. Mm. I was brought up that way, but yeah, eight scale would be the, probably the bigger class at the minute. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is the, that on the you know a lot more than money? Do you mean on a sort of world scale as well? Yeah, I think it's just. It, I think it is generally. It's the bigger class now, you know what I mean? Tenth scale is still very important and it's still a very big class, but I think, I mean, if you ask me if I could win 
like a Euros at a 10 scale or a Euros at 8 scale, I would pick the 8 scale one because it's just such a difficult race to win. Right. right. So much goes in. Now, obviously, winning the 10 scale Euros is is very difficult as well, but it's just, I don't know, it's a little, it's just, 8 scale's just, just a bigger class at the minute, you know what I mean? Yeah, Do you think yeah, there's yeah. more guys at your kind of level at 1 8 than there is at 1 10? It just seems, it's, it, it, I, it, if if you go to a Euros at 10 scale, or even like a Worlds at 10 scale, it's good and it's a big event. And it's, uh, you know, it's always, the, the the racing's always brilliant. But if you go to a Euros or a Worlds in 8 scale, it's like a, it's like you're at a, like you're at Donington Park. It's like a motorsport event, mm. you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just a little bit bigger at the minute. Maybe because you, every, you know, you can't just turn up and race. You have to take, you pit man and you know and, and another guy like some guys like the top guys they come with like six people it's car man and it so do you, do you go it's with like, like um, do you go with like the full radio pit man kit and all of that stuff now is that something you've bought into as well I haven't I mean I mean we have like last week there was it's just me and me and my dad but then Craig's there from Associated and then they send Richard Saxon over from the States to look after the team as well. Yeah. And then you have an engine guy, the guy yeah. Andy Kramer from LRP. So, you know, it's quite, it's, it's, it's pretty big and it's pretty intense. Right. right. So are you, because this, this has always confused me and I've, I've had a few conversations with people over, over the years about whether you race for Team Associated or whether you race for CML. And I, I uh, I was told that the UK drivers for Associated race through CML, but that you were the only team associated driver in the UK. Is that right? The I, I, would, I used to be the only off road. Well, apart from Craig, uh, I don't know if I was the only one, but yeah, I've, I've I signed with Team Associated in I think it was nineteen ninety eight. Okay. Yeah. And I, so I've always been factory uh, associated driver. Right. Okay. And does that mean you sort of get involved in? I'm guessing you you got involved in sort of the with the, with the Centro then and with the um, with the B5M and with the with the B6 development. What what sort of input do you have on on all of that whilst that was going on? Well, we had a, well. We had a little bit of input with the the central because it because it started in England. I can't yeah. remember there was the, the guy who made the atomic car. I can't remember what his name is. And, oh god, uh, no, I can't think of top Tom Yard. Uh, Tom Yard, he was was well, Tom Yard. kind of got it got you know got hold of one of the cars and started developing it. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of started running it as well. And then the guy in the states, well, they started sugaring the tracks in America and made them super grippy. Mm. So that then the rear motor car wouldn't work. So then they started, so they took a look at the the C4 car and then they developed it on from there. But to be honest, I don't have associated do a lot of the development kind of you know on their own in the states and and uh, don't have a lot of input. We had a bit of we had, we had a bit of input with the B6 because it was the first you know car pit high grip yeah. car that they were bringing out. Yeah, right. Okay. Well. Those guys know what they're doing. I yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm they've sure been in the do. industry for 30 years. And obviously, they went straight to Jameson anyway for the uh, for the laydown stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you you heard, but the one that he came on where he, he told us about his original laydown gearbox pictures. Oh yeah, I remember that. I've yeah. I've, I've not seen his uh, I've not seen his. Uh, interview you guys I watched, the, I watched the one with Lee well sorry I listened to the one with Lee and I listened to the one with Craig last week ok, okay. Right. good <laughs> which were good yeah the, thank you very much thanks man the um, the one with Ben was dead funny he didn't have too long but he, uh, he we were talking about the low riders and you know where they came from and you know when we were running them and all that sort of thing and he uh, I think we kind of trapped him into saying he was the inventor of the low rider he did actually yeah well and I don't know if it was the low. Well, I don't know if he if he can say he was the inventor, but <laughs> I do remember we were basically stated that we were just we were racing uh, either rear motor or stand up, and we were just getting our asses kicked. Yeah. By people who we shouldn't be getting beat by. Yeah. No offence, 
Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> That's it, then, I'm trying to work who that was. Tom Cock. Uh, yeah, we'll say it was him. I don't care if he doesn't yeah, like yeah. me. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we all love him. Everyone loves him. But yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. No, it wasn't just him. But you know, yeah. just we were getting, we were struggling against people that we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Ben started banding around with some ideas and sending pictures back and forth. And yeah, I suppose he, he can, he can kind of claim. Yeah. A little we're, bit that way. We're, I think. We're, good. we're big good. fans of that, and we're telling everyone it was Ben. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so that's it. So in, in ten years' time, people will just assume it was bad. Yeah, it's uh, got to be. That's there we go. That's what. So you you were uh, your one tenth season this season nationally. Couldn't have really gone much better. It's been brilliant. Care's been care's been really dark. Well, to be fair, since I got it at the since I got it last year, like from the last two rounds, two three rounds last year. Yeah. Yeah. Then we've not really played around a lot with setup because we just we just we've just stumbled on something that works great and just tweaked it per track and it's yeah it's been dull I can't really fault it driver's been okay and cars have been really good yeah yeah what what do you think happened at Southport then what was the what was still there because you you TQ'd pretty much uh, you know pretty much every round TQ from... two wheel drive and then Lee did me in the finals yeah yeah he did. He, uh, yeah. he saw, to be fair, I really enjoyed two-wheel drive at Southport. The racing was, the track was good. The racing was fast and furious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, even though you know I didn't win, I, I still really enjoyed the, the, you know, the whole. I mean, it was the pressure's not quite on because obviously the championships are already already over. But you know, you still want to win. You know, I yeah, always want to yeah. win at nationals. Yeah, without a doubt. But sometimes you just got to say, look, well, the guy deserved it, and uh, I, I did as I did as did as well as I could. But the other guy just deserved it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I I was um, stood at the sort of the beginning of the straight with Mick watching the finals, uh, and I think when Lee just went round you on the, like that second to last corner, the only person who cheered was ah, oh, I can't remember his name. Who's Lee's? Was it Leon? Leon, literally, yeah. because I was stood next to you. And I thought, well, I, that was quite good that, but I'm not even going to clap. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I was a bit gutted. <laughs> yeah. Over that. Um, so yeah, so I think it was only Leon who cheered because the rest of us were all. So, um, to be honest, I spent most of the time um, um, keeping an eye on Paddy. He seemed to be barking at the cars for one. Uh, sure, my dad wasn't it. My dad was probably looking at Paddy and not the track. He's his new favourite <laughs> friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we not. did. We both spent a bit of time with Paddy. To be honest, we we now know his um, diabetic regime and uh, he, about his fake lenses and all sorts of yeah. stuff now. Yeah, he's treated better than I am these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the right way. Um, yeah. So you've got the uh, the world's coming up. Yeah, it's still quite a way off. Though, I think it's in like November or something. Oh, is it? Are you not yeah, doing any cause... prep for that already then, or is that sort of what the Euros the other the other week were with the with the tent stuff? Are you taking that as as kind of? Well, we do the Euros, and now we, 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 to be fair, we just don't get to race on dirt in this country. Mm-hmm. So I'll just I'll try and do as much racing as I can leading up to it. I don't think there's. I don't think there is a warm up, or that you know, there's nothing scheduled. You yeah, don't reckon? Yeah, I think um, said that. You don't reckon Halliwell would look, take the covers off the dirt look, track? Pardon? You don't reckon Halliwell would take the covers off the dirt track at Robin Hood? No, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't think he will do. It would be nice. That's a good. That, that is a great little track they've got there. Yeah, good, beautiful. Um, well, so, what sort of prep are you going to be doing then? Are you, are you just going to be? If you, you got, uh, you know, I know you got a national coming up at. I think the last one's Stockfold. Um, obviously, four-wheel drive title still on the line at that one. But what sort of prep are you going to be doing leading up to the Worlds then after that? Because, you know, it's another month or month or two before it hits in. Yeah, it, uh, nothing. Won't be, won't be doing nothing crazy, but just, just, just racing. I always tend to find it doesn't really matter what, you know, what kind of surface or where I am, where I'm racing. As long as I'm doing some kind of racing, then. That's good enough for me, just to keep just to keep the old thumbs warm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so are you go, you're planning to go to the any of the EOS meetings? Yeah. Well, we've got an EOS in. I think it's in October. Yes. I don't, don't know where it is. I think it might be in Poland. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. One of the boys sent me a message before and said, "Go to Poland. It's dead cheap." <laughs> it wasn't as cheap as what I thought it was going to be. To be honest. Right. 
I uh, we went last year and everyone's and I, everyone was like, yeah, it's going to be dog, it's going to be super cheap, and it was it was a little cheaper than here, but mm. you know I still spend still spend <laughs> too much on it. Uh, well, on we're... gifts and presents, not on anything else, clearly. <laughs> yeah, on stuff for yeah. my wife, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> what was the um, what was the track like over there then? The what the US at the US tracks? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're uh, pretty cool. They're not. I'm not a massive fan of it, to be honest. The, the events are brilliant and the organisation's awesome, and you get so much racing done mm. in the three yeah. days. They really pack a lot in. Yeah, but you know, it's still racing off road cars on carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's becoming the norm now, which is which is which is fine. It's it's not it's not my favourite thing, but I'll I'll move with the time. What's your uh, surface of choice then? Well, I'd always rather race on on. You'd always rather race on a on a proper dirt track. Nice, nice. cool jumps. Because the the you can because when you can sculpt to jump, or you can sculpt to proper track. Mm. That's when you really appreciate uh, ten scale racing. Okay, okay. I think. Okay, I mean, I personally, I've not, I've not done any racing on dirt. I've, I've never raced the clay track in my life. Oh, you don't know what you're missing, mate. Well, you know, like I say, if Heliwell takes the cover off the track, maybe I'll take a venture up to Robin Hood and have a, have a go. Um, but there's just, you know, where, where are the, where are the clay tracks to go and take a tenth car to, other than Robin Hood? Well, I always have this argument with Craig. Obviously, I always say, you know, I was brought up on that stuff. That's what I like to race on. And Craig's all about... I mean, I understand why we race on Ashton Surf and I understand why we race on mm. carpets, obviously. It's mm-hmm. a lot easier for the clubs. And uh, you can't really... You, you can't argue with it. But And Craig, Craig's always back to me. He's always, Ashton Surf's the future. It's, it's uh, you know, it's easy to maintain all that. And he is right. And, uh, but yeah, I would... I, I would I would, if you know, in an ideal world, I'd always like, I'd always rather race on clay. But so we don't you, live in an ideal world. You must enjoy it when you go over to the states and race on their tracks, then. Yeah, it is good. It's uh, the the tracks and facilities are amazing. The one, the Reedy Race uh, venue at OCRC. If you won the lottery, that's what you'd build over here, exactly like that. Okay. Okay. It's uh, it's really cool. The whole the whole setup, you know. Everyone's got their own upgrade pit mat, and <laughs> you know, it's just little things like that. It's just, it's, uh, it's such a cool little, cool little venue. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. I'd like to do. It. I'd love to go to the states and have a, have a go over there. It was, um, it's the jumps. You know, I, I watched. I, I sort of, I, I got into it a few years ago watching the watching the videos on YouTube so of, of you know the likes of Cav and, and Mayfield jumping and overtaking each other uh, and it just it it looks awesome and that that really sort of drew me into it and then i started racing at southport which you know i mean you, you you'd be hard pushed not to be able to drive a touring car over there yeah um, hang on <laughs> it's got bumps leave my track yeah, out of it i really like so i really enjoyed the national at southport last week it was uh did you not miss cool. the cobbles and the concrete? Because Lee, Lee, Lee said he missed the the concrete section. The cobbles was 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 always an awful section. Thank you. So that, that was miles better. Absolutely, it was way better last week because it it kind of felt like it had a little berm in that corner, so I could really it, send it in hard. Mm. It has, it has, um, but it's just difficult to see from the roster. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, the, the, I mean, I, I did quite like the concrete coming onto the straight, and I weren't sure how the Ashton Surf was going to work, but it worked really good. And uh, yeah, I couldn't fault it. Everything that you changed at Southport was 100 percent perfect. Thank you very much. We noticed you had a slightly different line over the back section from anyone else. Uh, the patented crag line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you turn up. I spent most of the. I, sort of ran the time and keep them for the practice so I spent most of the time speaking, telling people going you see the problem he's turning too soon after the, uh, the sort of the middle <laughs> island in the back section and you came on and then jumped it yeah yeah I've done it for it's, I've done it for a few years that bit no one else can, no one else does it but i got to be honest I don't think it's any faster no but it, it looks look, cool it just looks cooler yeah, yeah it, it looks just really looks good it so cool <laughs> and I look like an idiot because I go look no look watch Evo, just watch Evo. Clearly, he's done more laps around here than anyone else. 
<laughs> whatever. And then you come on and go, well, you could do that if you wanted. Yeah, um. like I say, it's, it's tough to do every lap, and it, it's not. I don't think it's any faster, but it just looks a lot better. Mm. Yeah, I think me and Guts noticed when we were watching one of the heats um, from I the other end of the track. Was when we were marshalling the practice on, on the Saturday morning. Yeah, um, and then I think we sort of watch you you'd make if your line went in was great then you went for it but you didn't yeah sort of, yeah yeah you have like you, as you come into it you you have a couple of tents to decide whether you're going to go for that go for it or not or just back out but yeah mm. something different thank you very much where thank would you uh, where would you go back to then out of the out of the tracks you've raced this year what in England yeah, and, yeah. Well, anyway, if you could, if you could go back to one of the tracks you've raced at this year just for a free club race and a giggle, where would you go? Uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, to be fair, oh, oh, other sorry. than Southport, other than yeah, Southport. Southport was good. It's nice and close. It only takes me twenty five minutes to get there. Yeah, the track was good. The, what I really enjoyed about Southport is. A lot of the old timers were there, you know, who, haven't, who don't race anymore, and it was it was good to see so many old faces. Mm. Oh yeah, you spoke to Dave Smith. Dave Smith was there. There were a couple of yeah. guys there, Darren Wood. But I mean, it always happens at Southport. It's in a, it's in a perfect location for it in the middle of the park. Yeah, but yeah, good. just a couple of guys who used to who I used to race with like twenty years ago. A few of them showed up, so it was it was really good to see them all. But uh, apart from Southport, the, the one of the best tracks I've raced on this year at the Nationals was uh, was Bolton or Bowton. Okay. I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. We say no, Bolton. I change every I think I say Broughton. Even though it was a, uh, I mean, it was it's the other end of the world, and it took years <laughs> to get there. <laughs> it was it was, uh, the, it was really, really, really low traction national turf, so it was a lot different than anything else. Yeah, really but, sandy. Yeah, it was just it was one you know like the. The really long pile AstroTurf. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it just made it like really slick for AstroTurf, and it was yeah, it was it was it was a challenge, and it kind of changed it kind of changed the results around a little bit because the guys were used to racing on the Velcro. Yeah, they yeah. struggled. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was uh, it was that was it was pretty good fun. I'll tell you what looked tough about that track was the jump section in front of the rostrum. Um, it was it was difficult both days that. Yeah, it looked it from you know because we we see the Idle Idle Murphy uh, videos on yeah. YouTube that he does. Yeah. Um, and that just looked like it caught everybody out at, at one point or another through those through every one of those races. I think everyone got caught out by those little bubbles. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of difficult to see because it you it was right under the driver's stand, so you was you were. You were right on top of it, yeah. So it was kind of it was a little hard to judge, but then the land it was I think it was a double double, and the landing yeah. in the middle, uh, it was really sketchy. So you had to be you had to be really careful with it. So yeah, it was it was a difficult section. Yeah, it looked it looked like if you hit that fence because they had a, a sort of fence didn't they on the yeah on the far side of it. If you look, it looked like if you hit that, and there was a train of cars behind you, you were just that was it. You were done. You were at the back then. Yeah, you were finished. You were yeah. getting marshaled for a bit. No, that's well, look, it. Uh, uh, t- talking about the videos, do you ever video yourself? What do you do? You ever? What kind of practice do you do if you're doing practice? Uh, and oh, I never, I've never videoed myself. Do you ever watch uh, someone yeah. else, so like someone else's video of you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I watch. I, I the the guy who does all the national videos. Mm-hmm. What was his name? Yeah. Idle Murphy. Uh, that's, yeah, it, that's I, what his I, YouTube uh, channel's called. I watch all them. Yeah, there. Uh, I watch. I try. Well, I, I, you know, I, I'm still. I'm a racer and I'm a. I'm a fan at heart, so I still like to watch all the videos and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. good. That's good. Sometimes, like, I get like uh, the uh, eight scale Euros last week. Uh, mm-hmm. This is how big it's getting. David Ronald Falk was after I think it was after one of his practices there was a picture in his pits and his dad was there with like an iPad with a video on it and then his mechanic his, his engine guy was there with an iPhone <laughs> nice. with a video on it showing different sections of the track what he was doing right and what he was doing wrong yeah and that's how uh, I mean that's factory right 
Well, do, do you know what? It's getting like that, though. I mean, I, I, I think it's... I do it with the GoPro. I, I've been doing it now with the GoPro on me head for so long that I'm I'm just used to people looking at me like I'm a, a knob when I walk up to the rostrum <laughs> with it on. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't pay any attention to it anymore. But I mean, for me, it's been a massive learning tool because I've I've come off the rostrum and gone, oh man, yeah, this happened. And I drove really well and I did this and I did that. And I watch the race and I go, wow, shit, hang on a minute. No, I was really crap. A bit <laughs> wide there and a bit wide there. Oh yeah, I yeah. drove. I drove all of that section in the sand there. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, yeah, but yeah. I see where I was losing time. It, it's really helped me focus where I'm where I'm going wrong and what the car's doing because it gives me a second chance to see it. Um, yeah, but I, th- I do think that's the way it's going. More and more people now, after the initial, uh, you know, ha ha, look at look at Nobeg going up with the camera. Now I'm getting people going. Oh, what camera are you using? You know. Oh, can, yeah, that's it. Can that's you video it. mine? Can I? Can I have the copy when you're done? And it, it's it's definitely catching on because you just don't get that view of it otherwise. No. Now that you say this, I uh, I do remember at the Worlds in in Italy a couple of years ago uh, to 2014. Mm-hmm. I, I there was a double jump coming onto straight and it was really fast, and I I was really struggling on it. I, it was a bit of a funny angle. Yeah. You know, from the driver's stand, I was really struggling with it through practice. And my dad went over there and, and videoed one of my practice rounds, and in and he videoed it in slow motion. And you could, and as soon as I, as soon as I saw the video when I after I practiced, I knew what I was doing wrong. And then I had no problems on that bit after yeah. that. So it obviously does help. Yeah, without a doubt, I, d- I do think it. I do think it's a big, big learning curve if you if, if you want to. If you want to improve, because it's real difficult yeah. to get someone with a lot of experience to stand at the track with you and and just watch you, you know, and go, hang on a minute, I'm going to spend, rather than spend my time concentrating on making myself better, I'm going to help this guy completely make him, make, you know, do, do yeah. his five minute run. It's really hard to do that, and with the best of intentions, even if you want to help someone do it, it's a really hard thing to achieve anyway, to sit there with everything else that and I'm sure you get it if you stood next to the track with, you know, Muppets like me and Aiden coming up to you at the National going, oh, you know, hi. Oh. But it's... It, it, I think it's one of those things that if if you... I, I don't Sorry. know what Aiden's got going on there. It's obviously <laughs> the ninjas have got cars this week rather than motorbikes. Yeah, yeah the ninjas <laughs> have got cars this week. Um, so but, that's... It's, it's good, yeah. Well, but yeah, it's on, it's a big help, and I I, I do think it's something that point, people can if do. If you did video them, wouldn't you have something then? When I don't know what when you come off the roster, do you ever come off and go, "Well, that was great," and then Mick, your dad, goes, "Well, you were rubbish." <laughs> uh, he's, he's, uh, he almost really says two things to me after race, Dad. Right, okay. and he says, "What does he say?" He says, uh, oh, well, that was really good. Oh, good job." Or oh, I've made a mistake or I've made a mess, and I know I'm, and I'm, and I, I, I know I was watching the car as well, Dad. Uh, and then he's, and I just as I'm walking off the mesh, he goes, "Well, yeah, f that up," <laughs> and then just leaves me to go and stew for five minutes. And no. I just want to strangle him. Right. <laughs> What's... But yeah, to be fair, he's a bit like me, Dad. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't say a great deal. He's, you know, he's pretty laid back. Same yeah, as me. Yeah. What, what are you, what are you two? Um doing then between rounds if you've if you've had a round where you've struggled what what are you doing as far as sort of prepping between rounds and changes and things you're looking at is concerned because I, I've spoken to people that have said oh I saw Neil and Mick at a national and Mick was changing shock seals in between each heat and qualifier and he was doing this and he was doing that and I'm thinking there's no way you can strip a car down to nothing and completely re- rebuild it between each round. That would drive you insane after a quite a short amount of time. But no, he doesn't. I mean, we don't have to do anything crazy like that. I mean, first mm-hmm. and foremost, he makes sure that Paddy's okay. Yeah, that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but to the, one of my dad's greatest skills or talents is just watching the car on the track and knowing what's wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Even like, if I come off and before I've even said, you know, it's not doing that right or it's not right, you know, through that section or it's just pushing a little bit, he's al- he already knows, you mm-hmm. know, he's, he's he's probably been one of my greatest strengths, 
as a racer, having a dad who can who can just look at the track, look at the car on the track, and just know what it needs. Yeah. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's very good at that. And, and and to be fair, in between rounds, it, it, you know, if I am struggling, which you know, I, I don't struggle that much, at, you know, at the nationals because all the tracks are very similar. Yeah. Right. But. Uh, yeah, he, we we don't do much to be honest. He makes he checks he checks things over. We do the tires, charges and, uh, the batteries, charges the batteries, and then uh, you know nothing crazy. Just a few tiny little tweaks. Nothing, okay. nothing that's not needed. Okay, okay. So, well, so that's, that's interesting. Th- that did you were you finding that that's the sort of prep between rounds has got less and less since you went from the older sort of style of cars to what we've got now or, or, or is it has that always yeah, sort ma- of been massively. the case massively massively before well before when you had like 12 sets of batteries now I just have I have uh, two for each car basically that's yeah. all you really need and then the yeah. motors as well you don't have to skim them every run mm-hmm. you can run the same motor all, you know pretty much all year yeah yeah, and uh, you re- you know you rebuild the shocks before the nationals and check the car over, make, you know replace any anything that's worn. But the durability is really good on the on on our cars now. I think, yeah, especially the dual doubt. drive. I, I never I never I never really tend to touch it that much. We just anything that's worn or anything that just needs re- rebuilding, we get that done and then uh, away you go. But would you? Uh, uh, who would you... does that? I want to say who does that? Do you do that? My I dad's all. My dad's pretty much always done it, but uh, in the last year, I've kind of. Uh, dad's been a lot. Bit, dad's been a lot busier with work, so he's not okay. had as much time because he used to. He used to be able to do it while he was at work. He used to run a garage, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he should, he could just delegate people while he works on my cars, which is great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. But now he's uh, now he's not got as much time to do it, so I've kind of been, you know, keeping on top of the ten scale stuff. And then letting dad do the eight scale because I don't know what I want. I want nowhere to start to be honest with eight scale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, me and Aiden are big the same. Our, our things the the ten scale stuff, and it, it, it is something that's. It, I, I don't know. It, it seems from what we're hearing, from what from what we knew before we started doing this and started getting into it, the eight scale was pretty much. You know, not not being seen. We'd had the, I think the Plymouth track had closed down, and we're looking for somewhere else, or something had happened to their track, and they 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 sort of shut it down. And a few people sold off cars and bits and bobs in the in the southwest sort of region. I think they're up and running again now, but I'm not I'm not sure where it is exactly. Um, but it does seem like the eight scale stuff's really kicking off. Do you, do you think it's happening as much with the electric eight stuff? As it is with the nitro scale stuff, uh, I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say that the electric eight is big. It's not as big as as gas eight or whatever you want to call it. It's nitro. Uh, don't think. I don't know. I don't. I don't quite understand the electric eight. They're not quite. I don't. I just. Mm, I've never done it at Neobug. Yeah, people. A lot of people do it for practice. Yeah. Not just in, you know. Uh, extra track time but I, I just I'm not a big fan to be honest they're still set on fire <laughs> <laughs> just re, you know like like Ryan Mayfield absolutely dominated uh, qualifying at Neo Buggy this year yeah set it on yeah. ball in the final rolled out of the pits did one corner it just set on fire race <laughs> over with that's, that's and, a you know, great that's thing I'm about just, I'm just not a fan of that you never know. You can never predict when a lipo is going to go up. No, that's it. And I mean, they're so fast as well. I mean, nitro cars are fast when they get going, but they are they are different gravy fast. And then right. you see, and, and you know, some of them guys are not the best drivers in the world, and they could really injure someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's one of the big drawbacks of being on on a track with, with cars that size going around. We watched the um, uh, the Lasor fifth scale guys going around Stu Wood did the Euros the other week oh um, yeah yeah he got third over there yeah uh, he did well yeah oh yeah he was he was over the moon with it I saw him at the, he turned up at the natural uh, he was at Southport yeah yeah he was he had a had a quick chat with him there about it he was he was really chuffed um, 
but the cages that those guys have got to sit behind <laughs> when they're man's no, yeah. you're like, man, no, that's not for me. That that's not. I'll, I'll... I put when I when I marshal at eight scale, I put my gloves on. And yeah. that's as far as I want to go with it with with marshaling. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be putting helmets on and bloody suits <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Mind you, I've got to say, there's been a couple of times when I wish I had gloves on marshaling ten scale stuff. Um. You get the odd in, impatient. Uh... Oh yeah, you, you always do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think you get so much at nationals. You're so well behaved. Uh, it's because it's got to be because of because of Paul Worsley, right? Yeah, he's like the headmaster that keeps everyone on in check. <laughs> yeah, and I did. I didn't realise. I'm, I'm sure everyone knows anyway that whenever anybody says at the on the rostrum, Paul Worsley can hear. You know, uh, yeah, I think they, well, they got the the referee up there, but then I, think, I don't know if he's mic'd up. But no, he is. Yeah. He's mic'd. He's mic'd up. We can hear because I was in the you know, in the clubhouse making sure Wesley was all that. And I can hear exactly what uh, the John and everybody else <laughs> was saying. So there you go. Then so I, I can't be calling referees or Paul Wesley when I'm there. No, no. Next national then. No, and I'll probably get right, shouted okay, to tell everyone that. <laughs> uh, but I think a few of our local guys who came in because there were spaces in four wheel drive found it quite difficult because even on their timekeeping they'd make an error and go oh for now where, 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 where. and someone would go well, don't say that during the round <laughs> and they're like what are you talking about and there was like a bit of an argument I had to tell a couple of guys yeah just, just chill out guys wouldn't you and then someone goes you best tell him if he starts that when we're running they'll just ping him straight away mm. um, so <laughs> yeah it, everyone was seemed so well behaved certainly at um, the one tenth nationals that you know at, at Southport that I've seen is that is that the same kind of thing when you go to the the Euros and the Worlds, uh, do you sort of stand there not in silence? In, in Euros, they're, they're crazy to be honest. Especially eight scale European drivers, Spanish and right. Italians, they're absolutely mental. Okay, absolutely mental. They go <laughs> like obviously they've got, you've got your driver on the rostrum going mm-hmm. crazy, but then you've got your you've got his two pitmen <laughs> screaming up at you as well, <laughs> or screaming at anyone that wants to listen to. <laughs> Nice. Absolutely, uh, you know, but it's, it's they're just they're just they're just fiery, you know. What I mean, yeah. that's just that's just what they are. Yeah. But it's I mean it's crazy to see. Usually, I I mean I always think the the eight scale European drivers are the worst marshals in the entire world. Right. But then they're the first guys to to go mental on the rostrum when they crash <laughs> and scream <laughs> the marshals. You know, it's kind of, they don't see it as a two way street. I always try and marshal as, as I try and marshal everyone like I t- like to be marshaled. You know, I try and get there as fast as I can. Yeah, yeah. But you know, some of them guys just kick cars off. <laughs> as, I mean, I, I always marshal as quickly as I can, as long as the heat hasn't been so good that I've kind of gone into a bit of a daydream. Yeah. And then something's happened, and someone's gone marshal, and there's a car two feet to my left that I just haven't heard go over you know but <laughs> yeah it, it happens like but uh no you always want to be oh, there yeah. as quick as you can because i i feel like if i do it someone will do it for me yeah that's it but good karma i mean yeah. if i have had a good run i'm like a cat out there but if I've had a bad run, <laughs> I, I, i'll stroll around a little bit as well <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting a good run son i'll make sure of that if i didn't have one you're not having one yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I suppose you're all right there, aren't you? Because you, you know, if you're in, sort of always in the top heat, you know, you you, mar- you go and marshal the the, the the first heat again. Yeah. You know, you, do you ever see anyone, you know, who just finished maybe heat heat eleven, and you think, God, you could have run a bit quicker, couldn't you? You always, I mean, you do get them. You know, they don't they don't try and they they don't try and be bad marshals, but you just yeah. like to think they just need to be a little bit more alert. But yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yes. I'll I tell you if you. Go on. I was going to say, I suppose if you know, I've, I'm the one who sits there going, I was just daydreaming, you know, oh, I've had a good run. I'll just <laughs> sit there and think about that good run I just had. And then and then realise there's a race going on by my feet. Oh, yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta go with Marshall Care. Yeah, yeah, everyone's done it. I've done it myself. I like to yeah. be as good as I can be, but, I, you know, I've, I've had brain fades as well. Yeah. Is, is there anything else that you. you don't like about RC and anything else you think we could change make better uh, there is probably a million things but 
I can I, no. Do you know? I I think I, the, I, I enjoy racing. So yeah, yeah. I think the know, one I, thing he doesn't I like is that he missed mm-hmm. the international last weekend. Oh, I was gutted over that. <laughs> Do you know what I've got, really, I've already it, I told? Mean, I, we've done it a couple of years, and it's been so much fun. But the last mm-hmm. two years, it's it's clashed, which has been a real shame. I've told Damien Whittle that I've I've already said to him just book Neil in because he's definitely coming next year because I've uh, I've laid the gauntlet down for for Trish Neil at Schumacher. Yeah, uh, they turned up with some super prepped enduro car, and it it was just it was awesome. They had pit stops done in like nineteen seconds, and, and we just we couldn't compete with it. So I've got Russ Lee at CML working on a quick pit stop enduro B6 for next year's endurance race for us oh no how long was it like three hours yeah about three hours it was but I'll tell you what do you know what at the end of that three hours they were 2.8 seconds apart first and second bloody hell were they yeah it was unbelievable it was chaos all the way through who was the other team James Elliwell's team yeah yeah yeah, did, we, he have a, did he have like two batteries in his car or something like that? No, it was no. They didn't. No, they didn't. They were doing double stints, which meant that they, they only had to change the battery and get the car straight back out. But the the Schumacher guys had like a quick release stick pack battery in their car, and Trish won't send me any pictures of it because he knows I want to build something. <laughs> um, Keeping under wraps. But yeah, yeah they had. Uh, they had kind of a quick release battery mechanism and stuff where the bottom of the chassis just unscrewed and came out and they they'd obviously spent a lot of time into it and I felt like like we as the sort of CML big blue tent guys with our th- thrown together B6 that we went oh, I, I know what'll win we'll put a ten and a half <laughs> in there that'll give us loads of runtime yeah there you go no it didn't yeah. didn't work. Did they have, there was uh, Mikhail Orlowski racing for him as well? Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, I held yeah, him so up for top stair there. two and a half laps. I kept him behind me. I was well oh, nice. chuffed with that. Well chuffed with that. Yeah, Even he's, though he's, he's a good driver, <laughs> yes. uh, Orlowski. Very good. <laughs> it was two and a half laps, and then he went, nah, I'm just going to punt you out of the way now. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. It was gone. I never saw him again. But he's he been was, in his way for too long. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I kept blocking him going up the straight. Because I could, I think it was coming out of the last two corners because of that ten and a half. I could pull about a meter, meter and a half maybe on him, just coming onto the straight. So when he came onto it, I just looked at his car and thought, right, I'm just steering whatever way you go. Just block him. Yeah, it, yeah. Worked for oh. two and a half laps, and that was it. But well, no, well, it was I great fun, man. And, I think we're going to try and speak to Damo maybe a bit later, so we'll make sure when he's doing the calendar for next year. That the international doesn't clash with anything. Yeah, he can't clash with. It's always eight scale nationals or eight scale euros. So okay. if he can just get in touch with Effa and sort that out, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, we, we, we we'll just ask off. Eric. Eric will probably know anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you know that they're the first dates he puts in his diary when he gets cool. one. So uh, we'll we'll see what we can definitely do about that. Um, so, but no, is, mate. Look, it, it's been. It's been fantastic talking to you, buds, and I, I, I know we've been we've been on the phone to you now for nearly an hour, and I, I don't want to hold you up too much because it's uh, I know it's a it's a long old night, and I know you've got work as well. So, look, thanks, Neil. Thanks very much, man, for coming on. I'm I am I'm I'm, I'm a super massive fan of yours. I think you know that anyway. So I'm I'm over the moon to have been able to speak to you, but I'm sure everybody out there will be really really chuffed that we've been able to have a good chat with you tonight and we'll we'll love listening to it so mate please come on again whenever you've got time you're always welcome back on back on yeah great thanks for having us guys i really enjoyed it no yeah problem. and just quickly the, the reason we've actually spoken to you for about an hour is really we've just got you on so you can ask mick can we get mick on you're, you're never gonna get my dad on here mate. <laughs> no, no no do we need to write him a letter you might have to pay him some money, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be worth it. It'd be worth it. Uh, we'd, we'd, we'd get some dog biscuits for Paddy. Yeah, that might uh, swing it. If you do something nice for the dog, yeah, he, uh, he, 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 you might swing it. Tell him those okay. nice lads at the Southport National who paid loads of attention to Paddy would like to have a chat with him about the dog on their podcast. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll see. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have a word with him and see what he says. All right, man. Nice one. We're, no, nice we're, one. we're no rush. Tell him we'll wait for him. You know. <laughs> yeah, we don't okay. mind if it's next year. We'll just pencil it in now. Cheers, Neil. Thanks very much for your time. All right, no problem, guys. Take, Take care, care buddy. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, mate. Bye. Bye. Right. I think I've hung up on Neil. Yeah. That, that was eight. That was that was obviously great to speak to Neil. Thank thank you very very much for coming on the show, mate. Great to catch up with you. Great to speak to you. Obviously, great to meet you at the um, at the national at Southport the other week. But I think everybody will agree that was that was a really good chat. And um, yeah, nice nice to hear a bit a bit from the yeah, well, current it national was it, champ. We people suggest questions to ask. I think I asked a couple of them this time. Uh, but we we do just tend to descend into a bit of a chat. It, it's not certainly not a confrontational interview. It's not. I mean, we we always intend to have a list of questions, and we generally anybody that's coming on, you know, the the day or a couple of days before they come on, we'll we'll send them a list of things that have either been said to us by you guys out there that are listening that you want us to ask people if they come on. Um, stuff that we generally want to ask people anyway that we we think is interesting to try and find out um, and t- you know different bits of bobs like that it's normally a list of somewhere between 10 and 25 questions depending on who it is and how many of you have asked things now what normally happens is we ask the first question and that's yeah. about as far as it goes because the rest yeah. of it is just us descending into being toy car fans like the rest of you are and being a bit starstruck by people and just wanting to have a chat with them really and getting to know who they are and what they're about and what they what they like on the track and you know their views and stuff like that so we we hope it works for you guys as as well as it does for us because because we we really enjoy putting it together so if you can if you are enjoying it don't forget to like and share it um we really really do need those likes and shares out there to help us keep it going uh, is you know something that that we put our own time into. So if you guys can help us out with the click of a button, that would be that would be awesome. We would really, really appreciate that. Yeah, well done. So uh, who else have we got to come on, mate? Or who else has uh, said they might be available tonight? I think um, you had someone lined up, didn't you? Damo, yeah. Okay. Do you want to do you want to give him a buzz and see if he can? You can join yeah, us for a bit. Let's try that, buddy. You... You've got to remember these things are a little bit unpredictable, so if something's come up, then you never know whether you are going to be able to get people on or not. But it'd be good to speak to him, obviously, after the Invernational last weekend at Robin Hood. Um, mm-hmm. but, but he's certainly not answering his phone. OK, I've got him up on my screen here at the moment, but just as the normal blue thingy oh no he's dropped off now well there so, you go so. ok not demo not not demo <laughs> you never know you might you might pop on again in a bit you might just uh, uh, let's, so, let's see what happens yeah we'll see what goes on We I could talk about some of the people who've been said nice things about me I like that um, i I've got some work to do in the Isle of Wight oh, okay. before the yeah. end of the year. And then we have found out, and you shared the page, the group of the Isle of Wight Club. Um, seems to race indoor on buggies and like GT12s. Um, yeah. And then Sean Berryman came up and sent me a message and goes, well, whenever I'm in the Isle of Wight, uh, make sure it's on a race day. And he'll pick me up and ferry me around the island. Ah, oh, bargain. So that's really nice because it's much easier to get over as a foot passenger um, than getting me car on. So that'll be eight. And then I'm trying to remember what else I have to do. Oh, um, booking in is open for our next regional, mate, mm-hmm. which is not this weekend. It's next weekend. Uh, the new Astro Track at Ulverston that the boys have put together. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So booking in is open. So if you need a booking for that, get looks, back to. Uh, looks a bit slippery. So get your get your nice new, new yellows darks. in. Yes. 
and, and there's camping available on Saturday night. Nice. So me and Borley are going to camp on the Saturday night at Barrow. Yeah, and of course we got the Mendip Regional coming up in a couple of weeks at Tiverton this weekend. And then right. the weekend after is the Mendip uh, last round of the Southwest Regionals. Uh, it's four-wheel drive on Saturday, two-wheel drive on the Sunday. Um, set to be a good weekend at the moment by the looks of things. Um, I'm pretty sure as far as regionals go in the Southwest, it's going to be the most popular round that 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 comes up it's just one of those tracks that everybody feels like they can do well at if they have a good day especially a lot of the locals down here they all they all seem to enjoy a good day at Mendip especially if it's uh, if it's a dry weekend but that's a couple of weeks away yet hopefully I'll get there for a bit of practice beforehand um, but I suppose the biggie for me was the international oh yeah last weekend that we would have been speaking to Damo about tonight if he uh, if he was about, um, but yeah, what a what a weekend that was. Yeah, how did that? What time? When did you get there? Uh, I well, I, Chris Busby. We started on Thursday, I suppose. Um, Thursday evening, uh, Chris Busby came over. And he stayed at my place for the night so that we could leave at about quarter to seven, I think it was, mm-hmm. Friday morning. And then traffic was just hideous. Just yes. hideous. We got to, uh, we got to Taunton, which is about half an hour from, from my place, junction 25 on the M5, another few down from Mendip. And, we went and got a Costa and we got a bite to eat and we were sort of got ourselves set up and you know I had, I had a fag um, and then we were like right let's just hit the road and see how far we can get hopefully we can get up to the other side of Coventry mm-hmm. uh, sort of around nine-ish we were hoping to get there maybe a bit after yeah. and then you miss the sort of the, the kind of worst of the traffic going that way um, but when we got to Western, there was a. I want to say oil tank. It wasn't an oil tanker. It was an Arctic truck, and it looked like it had split its fuel tank, um, right. which had closed down two lanes of the motorway. So rush hour traffic in the morning was all being squeezed through one lane, um, and we basically sat still for I'd say the best part of an hour. Nice, good start. Always a good start. Yeah, we, you know, we've been on the motorway for ten minutes, and then we were sat still for an hour. Um, it's slowly started to get moving. I, th- I think what we got there probably about half twelve. Practice started at twelve. We were just half an hour late, which was a bit, a bit annoying, but not not the end of the world. Um, and then practice, we had four minute timed heats, it was just going queue up, go up in 12s I think we were going up, because yeah, Robin Hood Rostrum's massive, uh, the track's very big, plenty of room for mm-hmm. 12 people to be going round without any hassle, uh, and it you know turns out with 191 booked in, uh, it was 12 heat finals and 12 heat qualifiers for everybody all the way through the weekend, so... Well, yeah, okay. it was yeah, it was really good. Um six hours worth of practice on the Friday. Uh once we'd done that we had the vintage race where I think there was fifteen you know, the likes of R C tens, old Lozzies and you know, that 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 sort of thing, the old vintage cars going round. Trev Hale lent me the um Jammin J R C ten. <laughs> this replica world's car there's a picture on the big blue tent page yeah um yeah he let me he let me that one after hearing the podcast last week when martin owen came on so i got to race that one round which was um ab- absolutely dreadful <laughs> yeah yeah how anybody won a world championships with that i mean they deserve to be in hall of fame to be honest with you but <laughs> yeah. that, right kenny 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 
Stop listening now, Ken. You know, it's not going to get nice for the iconic guys. I don't think. I'm sorry, iconic guys, but my God, I, I <laughs> honestly, I drove that thing, and it was a seven-minute race. They announced as we started. Right. Um, you know, you know, if you made your front arms, uh, shocks, springs, and bulkhead out of a combination of jelly and <laughs> shaving foam. That was the kind of feel you got from the front end of that car. Um, it it was it was you were okay. firing it into a corner. Do you know what? Weirdly, the faster you hit a corner with it, the better it it reacted to it, and it was such an odd feeling. It was such an odd car to drive, um, but seven minutes of smiling and laughing and and just everybody on the rostrum having a wicked time racing those buggies round because it was it was just great fun you know really big staggered start for the guys that were obviously very very good with these things and embraced them a lot um and it it just worked it just worked really really well it was it was a great fun race um and and everybody came off with a big smile on their face so that was six hours plus another seven minutes of of driving around on the on the same layout um and then they had the wives and girlfriends and the kids race so they did a big race where all the wives girlfriends and children who had never driven that that was the stipulation on the on this race was that you must never have driven a toy car before Right, now, okay. I think this might have been a fairly loose rule. Right, okay. Because there were clearly some people who were either just very naturally good um, or had driven cars before because there, there was a big difference between... And wearing Schumacher tops. Yeah, you know, the, the, the cars that are jumping sideways going the wrong way up the straight... And yeah. the ones that haven't hit a track marker or missed an apex for the last six laps. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, you know, there was a big difference in, <laughs> in the drivers, and I'm pretty sure there was some cheating going on, but that's, uh, that, that was another, just a, another fun night. And then it, it closed down on that after the Friday. I think it was pretty much dark after they'd all finished. Um, closed down for the night. I went back to the hotel, did my usual rebuild of the car, we did shocks, a diff, and, seals and blah 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 blah. Um, and then Chris Busby came back we were sharing a hotel room and we stayed up until I, I don't know what time I'm fairly sure at some points we might have caused some complaints with the noise that we were making in the hotel room we were just it, we, he was he was Party. drunk we were having a great Great laugh. It was a, it was a, I had a great weekend with Chris. I must admit, we had a we had a really really good giggle. Um, but then we were knackered waking up Saturday. You know, both both of us had had maybe three and a half hours sleep. Um, I wasn't too bad. I, I was prepped and ready to go. Chris hadn't done anything, so he was kind of winging it as he was as he was going along. Um, and then we had a four minute time to practice in heat order mm-hmm. so you kind of you know that that one where you get up there three rounds early and start queuing up yes <clears throat> I think I did that on every single qualifier <clears throat> excuse me um, I think I did that on all yeah, the qualifiers I, I, though I'm just a to big sure. fan of getting there nice and early but to be fair when I was queuing up for my final there were people sometimes already there from the top heat because I was in the second from from top heat for qualifying. I had yeah. you know Jameson or Lowski in the heat above, Helliwell in the heat above. Um, I think Alan, I, O'Brien. Alan, Alan O'Brien was in the heat above, and uh, you know a few other very very good drivers. Uh, with Trish, did you uh, spend Trish the time with Alan? Uh, yeah, I did we had a, had a few few little chats before I went up? Um, great, great laugh, great guy. More than enough time for Alan and Alan. Ne- next time we're at the International, or next time I see you at Newpool, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely stop and have a uh, have a catch up. It was it was great to meet Alan. He was a uh, uh, a funny, 
funny, funny guy, definitely. Um, but yeah, then it was three rounds of qualifying on the on the Saturday. I think that took us up to about four o'clock. Got there sixteen, mm-hmm. sixteen heats to go through. Trucks, short course, stadium, four wheel drive, two wheel drive. Ab- absolutely mental. The amount of people that were there. There were bouncy castles. There was a beer tent. There was all the stuff you'd you'd want at your sort of mini festival was there. Yeah. It was it was a festival cross with the toy car race, and it was just you know the Upal series. If you've done the Upal series, you you'll have a very small taster of what the Invernational is like. But the Invernational's next level. So it's it's a completely different feeling. It's a completely different race meeting. There's you think you get a lot of track time at an Upal event, you get ten times that on the Friday of of the Invernational. Mm-hmm. You You've pl- said that, and, and everyone time. said that when they they come back and said because historically, well, I've never been. It's never a date we've really done. What what's the what one we, thing you want to go and do when you go and toy car race race your toy car? Race to car. No, but as soon as you just come back and said it's great fun, and you know we basically all just said that. Well, we're we're going to go next year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Whitlow already said you know see you all next year. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's um, important you do. I'll be there. Good. How did you qualify and go? Ah. Oh. The first round was great. Um, I just took it really steady. I, I took advice from from Dave the other week. Get you get your first good round in. Make sure you yeah. bag a good one in the first round. Did for me. I thought it was great. Um, I'd gone against all of the rules that I go get, go with on toy car racing for this weekend. So you know, that, that, we'll come to that in a bit, but. Uh, the three rounds qualifying were really good. Took it really steady in the first one. Um, I was struggling with the car, so it was easier to drive it a bit more carefully. I wanted to push it harder, like I knew I I could push it harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but every time I did, it kind of just went up on two wheels. It never really sort of rolled or anything. It just lifted up and sort of went, "Hey, it's too much," you know. Um, but I, I put a, a good first round in. Um, mm-hmm. I put a decent second round in. Uh, third round was just you know one of those rounds where you go, ah well, at least I got a couple of good rounds in the first two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I got what, what did I get? A, a sixteen, a seventeen, and a like a forty-six or something ridiculous um, and then that was it that was qualifying over uh, yes. the big thing for me was that I think at that point I had out qualified Demo and you know the fact that he's not on tonight means that I can really rub this in um, is that I out qualified right, okay. Damien in his lozzy thing um, right, okay. pretty much every time I think uh, did you? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Apart from maybe that last, apart from maybe the third round, but I think I've got much more than than that in the in the first Hello. two. Oh, there he is! I'm here. There he is. Hi, mate. How you doing? Yeah, all good, mate. All we good. were we were literally we were just saying what a bastard you are for letting us down tonight, and how much I whooped your ass at the international at the weekend. <laughs> Why am I letting you down? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right, you haven't. You, I've I've been here for the last twenty minutes, having to fill time with Aiden. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tricky that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, we we uh, no. what we'd intended on doing was getting Craggy on, and then when Craggy went, getting you on, so that we weren't holding you up for too late of <laughs> the evening either, and then we couldn't get hold of you for a bit, so we had to fill a bit of time until you appeared. Why couldn't you get hold of me? I don't know, Aiden's not very good with technology. Oh, right, okay. I'd left yeah, it out. Okay. okay. You're here now, mate. Um, how do you think the weekend went? Um, it went pretty well, I thought. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Is that a trick question? <laughs> no, 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 no. We, I've heard nothing but positive things. Um, oh, right, okay, well, that's I, good. 
I've I've, I've, I've just been raving about it for the last twenty minutes. So um, yeah, I've, I've, I think one of the one of the big highlights for me, other than <coughs> other than just the amount of track time that we got, was the uh, the enduro race, and that was just that was something else, and that was, that was a touch of touch of class that. Yeah, I can't take any credit for that whatsoever because it was actually Stu Evans' idea to uh, slot that in um, this well, year for something, uh, for something different, basically, because mm-hmm. it were all getting a little bit samey. Um, and for one reason or another, we can't run on the clay track, so uh, or we don't run on the clay track because of preparation <laughs> time and yeah. lack of people to help out. So, so, yeah, we had to shake it up on the Astro track. Um mm. I suppose the only downside was for certain people uh, they lost uh, around the qualifying uh, because, um, uh, strangely enough, you can't actually fit 28 hours into 24 hours, un- un- unlike some people would want to do. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, no, it all went well. It all went well. Uh, probably one of the smoother internationals. Um, nice. it, it, uh, it all flowed quite well. We did miss one small aspect, uh, but it didn't really affect anything, and nobody probably even noticed. So, um, yeah, the the, um, the endurance did go very well. Uh, you've probably seen Matt's um, video of the start, which was a bit of genius dreamt, dreamt up between me and uh, James Helliwell. That's um, awesome. James sort of started it, and then I sort of uh, added to it with the. He mentioned the bouncy castle, and then I just thought, oh no, this will just be brilliant getting 12 lunatics to run through the middle of that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it, even funnier when the poor guy who was out first, I think it was the people from Neem up in Northeast, yeah. picked the wrong car up, which was the Schumacher car, put it down, it fell off the table, and it broke a turnbuckle straight away. Yeah. Not just popped it off, it actually snapped it off, which was just. <laughs> Hilarious, because it was Michael Olowski who was stood on the rostrum with a pink skirt yeah. on and a pink bow in his hair, yeah. looking like a complete Charlie with no car to race. Um, oh. and, and as much as I like Michael, which I do, he, he supports, he's, that's two, two internationals he's been to and supported us, um, it, 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 it was just a comedic moment, but oh. that's what we're there for. Do you know, it, someone, someone said that Trish... Uh, swore that he didn't build that car with the old KF or or KC turnbuckles or bull studs or whatever they were because they had a problem with them breaking or something with the first ones Um, and it just just so happened that it was one of those that happened to break so He's, uh, he's denying yeah. it, but everybody's Well, there are a couple of convinced. controversial... Um, I mean, we, to be fair, we didn't really come up... Well, I say we. I didn't come up with the rules for the endurance until, like, the Wednesday before. Right. <laughs> Literally three days before, and which wasn't great, but uh, a bit of uh, not-so-great planning on our part. But um, uh, I think it kept people on the toes because we had rumours of cars running with um, batteries running in parallel to get, mm. like, 10,000 milliamps out of them still yeah. at 7.4 so they could run forever uh yes. we had we had rumors of well the schumacher car i don't know if you saw it matt but you, you they were actually changing the chassis they're actually changing the bat the battery is bolted to a chassis yeah and yeah. they actually slid the battery in through underneath and it clipped on to ready ready oh, positioned but, connectors yeah believe me so i've been a, i've but, been but they still were as quick as the Upal team with a with a TLR twenty two <laughs> one point rear motor from Jimmy, well, Jimmy's last car that he raced at uh, Worksop, and we just had a, a Velcro strap and a shorty, yeah. <laughs> nice. and that was it. <laughs> yeah. The um, I've I've actually I've, I spoke to the Schumacher guys, and I've uh, I've had a few messages go backwards and forwards because I, I asked them to send me some pictures of what they were doing. Um, right. Because I, I just felt completely underprepared for it i didn't realize oh, it was going to be said, taken yeah, yeah. as 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 seriously, seriously. As it, no and, and you've got to remember how close that was at the end it can't yes. have oh, been yeah. taken well, there was some, that... i mean obviously schumacher were delayed at the start um yeah. or 80s lovers they seem to want to call themselves <laughs> um were, were, were uh, delayed at the start which meant uh, team helliwell or men in tights as they like to be called 
um, got a bit of a lead. Yeah. But then there were a few moments with men in tights where the electricals were starting to work the work the way loose, yeah. and the car was stopping on the track, and then starting again. And then I think I can't remember one of them. You broke a few, a couple of rear ends, didn't you, on your car? Oh, we we there were a couple uh, of rear wishbones went on yours. I'm sure there one, were at least one, one of the anyway. wishbones went, and when I ran in the second for the second, did you battery, notice which car didn't break there, Matt? Oh well, hang on. This is because Chris, which car, Chris, which car ran three hours. Chris Busby solidly. put the uh, wrong mm. screws in the bulkhead, so the battery oh, fell out. Oh, there's no excuse. The ba- just, <laughs> <laughs> no, the bu- not the battery. The bumper fell off, and then right. as soon as I hit anything with the front end, like like you do, um, because mm-hmm. it wasn't exactly a, you know, let's let's give each other plenty of space race. Uh, oh not, no, there's certainly some not the start. Can't um, be done. It meant that the plastic bulkhead shattered into two, and whenever whenever I came to the corners, it didn't do anything. But then when I pulled it, oh, you, do you remember I was pu- I pulled it back into the pits and no one came over. Yes, I do remember. And I was that, yeah. I was going, come and fix it, come and fix it. And they came over and I'd look and went, well, no, it looks all right. And they put it down. And then I did another yeah. lap and went, no, hang on a minute, the front wheels are flapping. But because they couldn't see what I could see. They couldn't see there was anything wrong, and it meant that when I pulled it in again, they were going, well, no, keep going, and I had to get down mm. off the rostrum and get it myself then. It was a... No, oh, no. Well, we had a similar pit stop, because uh, I think Lee Fraser went up third... third uh, or, uh, yeah, Lee Fraser went up third driver. Yeah. Um, and he was complaining that gearbox was chirping, which it was. Right. So he brought it into the pits, but unfortunately, North Ian, and uh, Johnny Wishbone were having the tea. So yeah, we just yeah. look, we just looked at it and then sent it out and said it'd be all right. <laughs> okay. So and it carried on going, and then That's... we had us ringer in. We had Jamie Booth doing a stint for us. Oh, did you? That uh, probably helped. Yeah. Uh, well, bear in mind he'd never seen the track before. Well, he'd seen the track before, but he'd never driven round the track until we just yeah. threw him a an alien radio with a very alien car to Jamie and said, "I'll oh, just drive that round for a bit, will you?" And he did. Yeah, yeah. It was good. You um, will he was champ. pushing it quite hard, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for an endurance. W- high you... world champ. Just throw that round for twenty minutes. I've I've got to say, during yeah. that race was the only time that I attempted the shortcut on every single lap. <laughs> shortcut. <laughs> what shortcut? I made it one out of every fourteen times that I attempted it. Really? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> it was it was Which worth shortcut it. was this? I can't remember a shortcut. When you go over the tabletop in front oh, of the rostrum. The yeah, over hump, the second jump, yeah. And then you go the little hump and then you go over the step up. And if you hit the step up right, yeah. you could jump straight mm. over the wall and land on the corner. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. I managed it once with the short course truck and then <laughs> second time I nearly took the marshal's head off. <laughs> yeah. So I decided that was maybe not too safe. Uh, I, no, they, I... I had it pretty sussed. It was all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, endurance came down to two point eight seconds uh, right at the end. They were, they were. Re- I think it was Eugene Galley that was racing, and Orlowski was chasing him down. Orlowski's third stint. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, so anyway, they didn't win in the end, which is quite funny, really. The the, uh, the right team won in a way. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, so endurance race went down pretty well with everybody in the endurance race. Um, Do you know what sort of feedback you've had uh, from it not, yet? Uh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of feedback. I've got um, 70 people have responded today wow. to our yes. email that we sent out One uh, of to our me. survey. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Come on, <laughs> what, what, what have you had so far? Uh, I, I, I want to wait until we get to maybe tomorrow's in <laughs> to see what people are really. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't know why I bother really doing the surveys because, <laughs> to be honest with you, no one's ever happy, are they? But there you go. Wow. Um, well, do you know what? If anybody always, came away something. from that meeting unhappy, they need to they need to go and have a word with themselves. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, um, I, I mean, there's a lot of people saying it was amazing, and there's a lot of people giving it ten out of ten and saying it's the best meeting ever. And, and you've got to take, you know, you've got to take that and, and really, really thank them for the for the kind comments. You know, um, I know we know there's we know there's issues sometimes with the site and and what what we've got control over, but. Um, you know, we try mixing it up every year. We try something a bit, a bit different. Um, the endurance race was um, completely different this year, and we mm. knew we were losing a, a, a round of qualifying. Um, Worth it, I think. Uh, ev- everybody had an opportunity to enter a team, and as you very well know, we were still entering teams on the Thursday night before the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you because you put a team in on on the, at the last minute. So <laughs> yeah, it's... you know people people that have people had plenty of opportunity. I believe hmm, roughly four months to put a team together. Yeah, uh, if they wanted to run in the endurance race. So and that's how that's how I'm going to leave that one. Um, so then we okay. went on to the uh, oval race. Uh, which was actually won by Ben Jemison, who put a really fast time in. But I think by then people were uh, sort of milling about demo, wanting demo. to. Uh, what, what exactly yeah. is the oval race? Oh, the oval race. Well, we modify the track, and you have to. Uh, so each, well, each driver that wants to participate, they don't get a practice lap. They basically have to set off and try and do. We call it the oval. It's basically round the sort of perimeter of the track in a way okay yeah. so it, it, you go over the tabletop then over the step up and then round the, the banking down the straight and through race control but you won't yeah. believe how many people found that really difficult they either go way too hard at the jumps and try and jump it all in one yeah or they're a bit too steady and then can't put the power down so mm. uh richard Coates is a prime example he brings his durango that's mortared up uh, every year and uh, usually doesn't make it over the jump this time <laughs> he the banking before he fell off the track which is quite good really um, but one of the I'm trying to think who, who actually one of the kids put a really quick time in it was sort of um, it was around the 12 seconds mark and then Gemmo went out with his uh, K2 and uh, obliterated that 10 point odd seconds so oh, <laughs> it was a pretty fast time Um uh, and then we had a bit of a break uh, cause, um, because I needed to sit down because mm. uh, I was ther- I was thermal in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we we had a natural break and then um, and then we had the band. Um, oh, and that was good and night, uh, huh? the band sort of warmed up slowly. They got we got everybody going slowly but surely. But by the end, um, there was quite a bit of uh, dancing and pole going going on. It was quite uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. By which time it was virtually midnight, and we'd said we were going to switch the music off at midnight, <laughs> which I think we did at about five past midnight. Well done. Um, well done. To yeah. keep it all very family friendly. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I enjoy for the pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, the stormtrooper. Yeah, the mysterious stormtrooper. Yeah, yeah. nobody knows who he is. <laughs> nobody. Nobody uh, knows who he is. Guffy said he was his carer for about an hour. Yeah, I can believe it. I can believe it. The stormtrooper had minders walking around with him for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was that. I had his water. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Did, right, okay. I don't know if you noticed that whenever you saw Star Wars, but all of them had a guy running behind them, going, "Are you all right for a drink?" <laughs> did they? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah, we had a stormtrooper turned up, and lots of people turned up in eighties uh, fancy dress, even though we only announced that about a week before. It was yeah. due to happen, but eight hey, fancy dress is easy to get. I managed to get Stu Evans a pink tutu and some high <laughs> high day glow gloves and some day glow yeah. leg warmers from a shop in Burnley. I mean, it's not hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, well. that's probably what they sell in Burnley anyway. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Burnley's still stuck in the eighties, obviously. Yeah, so that's, um, that's you know, actually, there was a quite. You, 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 we we were just missing the dulcet Scouse accent tones because uh, there were quite a few. Um, Curly haired, yeah. uh, mustachio tracksuit wearing, um, yeah. Northeast boys walking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It, I saw it was that one, Idle Murphy. I was just about to reply to his Facebook post of, and I was going to say that was racist. I think Mark Hancock was pulling the best. Yes, one, he was. He, oh, he yeah. looked the absolute. He was the epitome of um, yeah. of uh, the Scousers off the TV. So yeah, yeah, he, he loved was, it. Uh, it was good. A lot of people. A lot of people took more people in the fancy dress than normal. Weirdly enough, mm. must must we'll have to try and pick a generic one next year. Oh, um, you have the honey but, yeah, monster. Yeah, um, yeah, it was sorts. good. It was good. 
What was it? Um, and uh, the, the it, weather played ball, obviously. Which oh, yeah, it helpful. did. It was, it was forecast rain as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it absolutely threw it down. I got to, uh, I left at about seven, mm. and I got to a, uh, not far up the A1, and it lashed it down. Yeah. Yeah. So, happy days. Yeah, oh, we perfect. Were we were happy lucky. Happy days. But, uh, uh, the finals were a bit of a blur. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we 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 sort of it was taking two hours to get through a round of sixteen oh, heats. Crazy, wasn't it? Um, and you know uh, we had un- we were supposed to have one hundred and ninety two drivers, and, and, and uh, unfortunately we only had one hundred and ninety one, which were a bit mm. of a downer. Does that make go. it the biggest tenth meeting in the UK? Um, I so- would probably think so. I think we've been sort of claiming that title for quite a while. Hmm. Um, you you missed the one on the dirt track where we literally had half the field on the track at once, which we decided was the most cars on the track at once. Okay. Yeah, that that was a number of years ago. But okay. um, maybe should try that again. Another idea for the ideas box. You ought to find yeah. out what the world record is for the single most number of toy cars in a, in one race. Oh uh, yeah, I think I think we probably had it on the clay track about. Well, the last time we used the clay track before the Euros, pretty everyone was stood around the perimeter of the track and on the rostrum, racing the cars around at once. <laughs> okay. Um, nice. Okay. I used the I used the short course truck because I thought it'd be uh, less cause. Well, I won't, it won't cause less damage. It would cause a lot of damage, but <laughs> yeah. le- less damage to my own car. If you know yeah. what I mean. Easier to see. <laughs> yeah, easier to see. Um, uh, the finals were pretty exciting. Um, I think uh, the second leg of the A final two wheel drive, when Jemison and Collinson literally went over the line together, crashed oh. together, trying to get over the line, and they had counted the lap and they still had to do another lap. That was yeah. quite interesting. <laughs> uh, luckily, it was Skeldin who was marshalling them, and he's got a, 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 a semi decent head on his shoulders and actually put them down in the right order mm. um mm. so so they, they so that was good and um uh, michael olowski won the four-wheel drive yeah. um i think it was the third leg where we got pushed the hardest probably um because yeah. we had the guy from belgium as well as it holland Wes- wesley van, he- yeah, van helsing or whatever he's called um Van Helmond, he was he was racing. Uh, he was pretty quick in the last leg, but uh, and then in the trucks, obviously, I managed to throw away TQ, the first TQ <laughs> I've taken at the international trucks, right? Uh, and I managed to convert that into third. That was quite impressive, uh, isn't it? From TQ, well, it happens. It happens. You it got happens, most of it. There was very yeah. some, some very close truck racing again in the third leg. It could have gone any way because Jim had won one. Uh, Skelders had won one, and if I won it in a faster time, I'd have won the meeting. Yeah, but uh, I got in the lead, and then and then it went wrong. Uh, and I think in the end, Jim was in the lead, and I was sort of protecting Jim from Skelding because we didn't want Skelding to win. No, yeah, um, of course not. On like second lap, lap to the end, we came over the step up literally in a train, and one of the back markers wiped Jim out. Uh, Skelding uh. managed to squirrel his way through. <laughs> And uh, and that were that really. So Skelding Skelding won again and swore retirement, but he sa- he says he's retiring every year and then he comes back. So it yeah, was close he'll be in. Um, he'll be back. It was close in all of them though. I mean, it, it, all all through the heats for me, I, I I felt like I was just close with with everybody. And as as the heats were going through until that top heat came up, I, I almost felt like from everybody. From the second heat onwards, mm. there there wasn't much in it. The, the top, no, top no, ten were I mean, the top, the top ten, but were a lap up, weren't they? Really, yeah. but they were superstars, so yeah, you, yeah. Know, you expect that, don't you? I suppose. Yeah, you do. Um, but we need we need a few superstars there. We don't want loads of them. Um, that's you know, I, I didn't mean to clash it with the eighth Euros, <laughs> well, uh, but it was only when I it was only real it was only when I realised I had done, which I realised why wow, I hadn't done any phone calls from Mick Craig. Anyway. <laughs> well, Neil said that we've just we've just spoken to Neil, and he said, "Yeah, oh, I was gutted, absolutely yeah. gutted." So we, we, he, I, I promised that you would look at the um, the calendar properly it, this time. Yeah, he said it normally clashes with one of the eighth races in one of the eighth European races so if right, it, it basically right. if it doesn't clash with that I expect you'll find it'll be there 
Well, I think you might find next year, which is a, a little bit of an exclusive, is that the Invernational will not be held on the first weekend of August. Ooh. Um, it's possibly going to be a, a, a bit earlier in the year. Really? Um, d- d- yeah, due to varying uh, various things, which I don't need to go into. But yeah, the date will change, and we'll, we're, we're just working with uh, James uh, okay. on what the best date to uh, put it on uh, okay, will nice. be. So there you go. Well, well done. Thank you. Um, so what's straight the- away. What's the? Yeah, well, we'll put you know, we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get it out there. Uh, oh no, let me know. The... Let, let me oh, know let first. Know. Yeah, because right, I can what? book the hotels when they're cheaper. Oh um, right, okay. You, you haven't been to one yet, have you? No, no, we haven't. No, but literally, Guppy right. said so many nice things. Oh really? Right, all okay. all the feedback from the people who I speak to who went. Yeah, and oh, chatted good. to has all been positive. I literally have gone. Oh, good. I don't know why we've never been. It just, it, we're um, booking the Opal series, and we never went the Invernational. Yeah, but it's a long the, three days. <laughs> God, isn't it, Jack? It's, uh, it, it's a the, long three days, you know. Yeah. Well, no, we'll we'll definitely be there next year, mate. I'll, I'll say that now. Uh, All right, cool, uh, cool. What's bring, the, bring your own um, portal loop. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, bring a padlock. That's probably the best. Yeah, thing that's that's probably better. I'll park my yeah. car in bring front of one next bring year. Bring your own padlock. Uh, well, yeah, well, the, um, the toilets at Southport National near the end weren't great either. No, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. There's some animals happens. about. What can I say? There yeah. are, yeah, there are, yeah. I, th- I think I, I'm. <laughs> I I'm, say anything more. No, than no, no. no I'm, I'm a d- at the demo. At, at the at what people do. I, I I went up to Alex at the end and I said, uh, I don't know if you've. Uh, You've been down there yet, but, um, you know, and kind of, kind of explained the situation after mm. I'd just walked into the cubicle to go to the toilet and realised mm-hmm. what I was then mm-hmm. trapped with. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd, yeah. you'd think that... Um, <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not that we know everybody <laughs> who comes to the, to the racing. We don't know everybody. But you, you know, oh, it's probably you, you think they were relatively no, educated prob- in how to go to the toilet, maybe. But yeah, maybe that's me. Maybe, 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 maybe you know, I don't know. Um, anyway, there's not much we can do about it, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, um, no. You know, but, but um, great weekend. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to end on that. Yeah, no, 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 um, no, look, I'll tell you what I wanted to ask you about. What's mm. the uh, what's the deal with ten and a half at Chadderton this year? Oh, uh, yeah, um, we're just about to, um, uh, in fact, <laughs> I, I, actually launched, I, la- I actually launched the dates tonight and then Stu told me to take it take it back down again because you know he wanted to do some graphic for it or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't mind telling you because it's going to go out tomorrow or whenever you, you'll get this done. So um, the story on Ten and a Half will be that the survey um, the survey was effectively sixty uh, forty against. Wow! Yeah. Okay, um, we had we had sixty odd people respond, um, and it was sixty forty against. So, um, and we uh, with the people who pledged to come, we st- we still can't make it work uh, just on ten and a half. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, sort of a hybrid of what Southport do and a hybrid of what Bury do. So we're going to do two and four-wheel drive modified and the 10.5 spec class blinky for the people who want to run 10.5. Nice. And we will we will trial the class, uh, and then everybody gets, uh, you know, everybody can race what they want to race mm-hmm. um, at, at Chatterton. So uh, is that result. four-wheel drive as well During on the, the 10.5? Uh, probably not. I've put it as no. two wheel drive. To be honest with you, I okay. think pe- the people with four wheel drive are only doing it to help me out. To be honest with you, so um, and that's, that's all know. we do at Southport. We only have two wheel drive ten point fives. I think that's probably because of the size of Southport, though, isn't it? And the four wheel drives just don't really work very well in in there on on well, that we, on, on your track. We don't. We don't. Well, we don't have any. We in fact we actively <laughs> discourage four wheel drives indoors. <laughs> uh, so that's fair enough. If, if a new person turns up and it's the only car they've got, they can run yeah. fast four wheel drive. But if someone yeah. comes back, who's and I, the question I ask is, are you any good? If I don't know them, 
and he'll go, yeah, I'm not bad. Sorry, you can't win a four-wheel draft. Yeah, you, yeah, you just, yeah. You just no, go no, with no. carnage. But uh, no, 10.5 no, two-wheel drives, great idea. Yeah, Linky as um, well. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a bit of spot checking. I'll get Graham North to do some scrutineering on it. Um, Mate, you don't. If really we see to... anyone who's who's super quick, then we'll obviously call them. Call that's them in. We and we're do. obviously, you know, we you know we don't mind upsetting people, so that's all right. Mate, <laughs> we, we've had no we've we've had no other issue than one issue on ten point mm. five, and that's all we do. If someone's super yeah. quick, I go, "You were super quick. Show me," and, and it just blinks, and you go, "Thank yeah, you yeah, very yeah. much. That's fine." Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You'll just find that the guys who are super quick have got new motors yeah. and new speedos. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, I know the speedos and motors have moved on. The other thing we've done is we were going for. Um, well, the idea was well, one of the ideas was to put um, a one tire rule in. Um, yeah. mm. What we've actually decided to do is um, uh, it's any one tenth off road uh, rubber tire. Supplied by Schumacher. Okay, that you right. can use. Okay. In any in any form you want to use it in. So if you want to Dremel a set of mini pins, you can Dremel. As a long set as you don't pins. do it in Chatterton, yeah. As long yeah. as you do it outside in the car park <laughs> and don't cover the place and, and yourself in black dust. And I can't believe inhaling mi- microns of Schumacher <laughs> rubber is really very good for you. But I did watch someone do it last year in mm, Chatterton and just. Just basically laughed at them because I just thought, well, you're getting anyway. You're going to be ill. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 that that should sort of all go on Oopal uh, tomorrow. I'm being told. Well, so, I, um, I, and, mm. and our dates are you can you can do all of them. Our our turf wars are on a different Sunday to Berry's competition and on a different Sunday to Oopal's. And we've even said just three out of five. I don't know how that's yeah. going to work, but that's what we decided. So it's three out of five. We we have got a weekend booked in December, right? Uh, the ni- the ninth and tenth of December. We we weren't we ran a weekend last year, but it wasn't very well supported, even though it was the same format as the Opal series. So and this is not this is not set in stone at all. Because we just said, ah, we'll just run the Sunday then, no problem, just have it in a normal meeting. But we have actually got the Saturday still booked. So there are tentative talks for an endurance race on the Saturday. Uh, and then a normal race on the Sunday. Tentative Ooh, talks. Yeah. Let me just that's pro- stress no, the word. No, no that's good. Talks. I think because no. we, we had a, obviously we had a two-day event at Southport. You did, indoors. yes. And yeah. what we get here from the Barrow lads, the South Lakes boys, all the people from from distance, they go, I'll come one day, but to come and then go back and then come again, mm. yeah, is puts a few people off. That probably costs yeah. us 20 people. Yeah. Although there are some very cheap travel lodges in uh, Chatterton. Yeah, but people, we yeah, stayed, I think it was 24 quid a night. It was not. Yeah. That's good. So uh, and there was a pub right next door as well, which was handy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we haven't we haven't devi- we haven't even thought any further than that. It's just that after the endurance race was so popular and so successful uh, at the weekend, um, certainly some of the some of the guys uh, really fancied running a longer endurance. Um, I've talked them down from twenty four hours. <laughs> Thank Jesus. God. Um, Battle, yeah, did, did, we, did Batley we, do we, us 24 hours? No, York York, York. did it York, yeah. York, it was called the Ebo 24 hour race and and it's the only time I've seriously considered giving up racing <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's because abs- there was nowhere to sleep and it was just it, it, it's, it's great during the start of it but you get to about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and all you want to do is sleep, and it's yeah. just, you just feel sick. To be honest with you, it was yeah. just, some of them enjoyed it, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit on in on in age for messing around with that <laughs> stupid stuff. So um, that three hours so, yeah, was so, enough. So, yeah, we'll maybe we'll maybe do something with that. The date the date is still booked, I believe. So we'll uh, uh, you know we'll, we'll see what we can do. How we work it in Chatterton for the pits and what have you would have to be thought about. Mm. But um, you know, I'm sure we can because uh, there's all that room behind the rostrum that we've got. So we could we could even do a bit like we did at uh, the International, where we bring them 
bring the cars off on one side of the rostrum, the teams are sat behind it with tables, and they go on at the other side of the rostrum, because it did seem to work well. We did yeah. have to keep shouting at people to stop stop them running, mm. but um, most of them just did very silly walks, which was quite good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Added, yeah. added, added to the, uh, yeah, added to the uh, fun. Uh, let's see. <laughs> but, uh, and and yeah. Opal Opal series next year. Yeah, there will be one. <laughs> <laughs> there will be one. Yeah, I haven't really. Um, I'm, yeah, I've, I've only just recovered from weekend. To be honest with you, I was abs- I took Monday off work. I was absolutely shattered. So yeah, yeah. I've got um, this week. Off, Chatterton was the main. Chatterton's the main thing to sort out first, and then we'll then you know we'll start looking at um, we'll start looking at the series for next year. We we, we, we like I say, the international is going to be on a different date, so we, we we're having to work that in on the hoof um, a little mm-hmm. bit. So it's probably going to mean that the international weirdly comes before the end of the series, which which I I've always liked the international to be the last big meeting of the year that we get involved with, but yeah. it's just not going to work that way um, going forward. So we Are need you... to uh, we need to re- rejig and rethink, and we'll 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 um, you know we'll we'll evolve and um, we'll we'll figure it out. You know? Do you not think oh, that if uh, it would be worth looking somewhere else to run it for a year, or is it just one of those things that you? I you... think I think you've got to think of where have you got a site that will allow us to do what we do. Yeah, nowhere anywhere well, I, in the country. I, could, I mean, I, I could, could throw of... Southport into it. There's, no, there's, there's enough no. Room, there's enough room at well, Southport, but I can't imagine the residents of Rotten Raw being yeah. altogether happy with a yeah. rock band. Going maybe, on well, midnight. maybe you're thinking he, he too close a, to home. They do ha- well. They actually they do have a concert in the park, but yeah. Mm. Hang on, hang on a minute, Aiden. You had two like people that. from the croquet club tell you that the speaking was too loud on the speakers at two o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, um, that so um, you know, yeah. I'm not too I mean, sure we, about we, we are, we are very, I, parties. I think, I think we all know don't we? We, uh, we are, we're all very fortunate with Robin Hood and Robin, Robin Hood is the is the um, sort of um, ancestral the, home of Opal to a certain extent. It's so. Such a great maybe venue. so, maybe so. But the yeah. other place you've got on the Opal calendar that is as secluded and as out the way as Robin Hood is is Mendit. Is Mendit? No, yeah, but no one has no one has the space. Well, yeah, I we think you struggle getting them all camped. Matt, yeah. that's your problem. You never get. I mean, we were getting complaints about the camping at. Uh, at oh, I'm not, I'm not ah, but that's, I've had a few that's, gripes about that's, how much room. That's there because were. everybody I parks were, in the. I um, there were loads of room. Oh, there was. There was tons yeah. of room. It's just because everybody was parking in the wrong bit. There's an overflow field. Yeah. For parking yeah, at yeah. Mendip, don't, which don't means that. How many, t- how many times did I shout for the kids not to turn the mains water on? Oh my god! Yeah. And it got to the point where I had to threaten them with expulsion from the site, <laughs> which is not it's not what I want to do at a fun meeting. <laughs> but we we had no mains water in the toilets or in the no. in the cafe. No. Because so we ended up having to tank tape the tap up that much so they couldn't actually turn it. Yeah. But you shouldn't well, have to be doing that. That is that yeah. is one of the, you know, that is one of the, one of the slight gripes that I have. That I, I don't mind. We, we put bouncy castles on for the kids. I mean, they love it. They do love it. I mean, them, yeah. them bouncy castles were were bounced to death, weren't they? Every no, day, without a doubt. Um, but there's not a right lot of parental um, supervision going on. Let's put it that way. No, it's just, um, that, but that's the same. Even when you get club meetings, mate, and people turn up with the kids, and they're not. They're, yeah. It almost feels like sometimes the kids are there to, you know, Run because feral. yeah, a little bit. But yeah, you you should be keeping mm. an eye on your kids. If you take them to a race meeting, you've got lumps of metal doing forty five plus yeah. miles an hour so yeah 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 yeah. you know you... yeah it's one of them mate i mean we try we, you know you 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 put signs up you tell them mm. um I, you know it, it didn't spoil the meeting no it no. was just a bit of an annoyance that we could have done without uh with the water going off and on but uh because I then sort of take responsibility with James, you know. There's big, me, you know, the the team are there. There's me, James, and 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 they come to me or James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and and you've got to take responsibility. But 
you've also think, well, it's about time you took a bit of responsibility because it's your bloody kids that are doing this. But there you go. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it were a bit of a bugbear. But anyway, we never found the culprits. It's probably a good job I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Also, they tied them to the short course truck and driven them around <laughs> on it. But anyway, uh, yeah, but the, no, the meeting went really well. And, and, and like I say, we, we, I mean, we had paid reserves. I think all the paid reserves got in, and we were one two wheel drive down at the end. So, Aiden, if you'd have been there, you could have raced. Yeah, yeah. And but, you know, you had, to, you had to be there, as they say. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, that, yeah. So, series, international, all happening next year, uh, maybe slightly different times, and we don't know which clubs are going to yet, but I've got a reasonable idea of where oh, I think we're heading. Brilliant, mm-hmm. brilliant. Now, remember, if you ever want to work on dates, speak to Eric, because Eric really like, thinks he can predict what weekends the nationals will be anyway. Um, yeah, well, that would be helpful. So, if, if Eric wants to get his crystal ball out and uh, yeah. and, and if, figure out when if, he if thinks you look the nationals certain are going to be, that would be good. Certain weekends, you will know. You'll go. Well, there's always it's always one then, and they always have mm. two at the beginning and the end of that month. So yeah. um, I'll get him working on it. He's yeah, get him working do. on it. Any 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 information you can uh, send my way helps me. Um, oh, we've got I, a couple know, of clubs to go and have a look at. I'll mm. speak to. Um, we've got a couple in mind that we're going to go to. Um, and uh, we, but we won't making any decision on that until at least after Bank Holiday weekend. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> also, you know, until you know nationals and then the regionals get in, you know, well, when you know the nationals, you can sort of sort your dates out. I say Eric has an idea when they tend to be. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, um, I've enjoyed this year, mate. I've enjoyed good. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. The Friday of Robin Hood was one of the best days I've ever had racing with oh. car <laughs> on that practice. Literally, literally, it was just you know, I, I had a terrible. Both me and my terrible trouble on the Saturday and Sunday with issues with our car. But Friday, the greatest. Broxton was good. a great weekend. Mendy good. was just epic, uh, <laughs> and Berry was great. Yeah, you know, really, yeah. ju- ju- everything was. Ju- everyone's had a great time. We've had. Uh, as as you probably had loads of issues, but I've had none, um, and I love it because I don't have to do anything. No, no. I mean, the issue, issues. Haven't, we haven't had. I haven't had that no. many issues, and you forget about. You forget about the uh, the things that maybe just didn't go quite as you planned because uh, you remember all the good bits. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. even mm-hmm. even this weekend, if I didn't put the stupid survey out, I won't be. I won't be reading everyone's responses. Uh, it's it's my, my decision to go and do that because I sort of want to know what people think and then I think I don't really want to know what they think, to be honest with you. you know, I, 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 after the National, I emailed and Facebook messaged lots of the guys who I'm going to say the team leaders. Maybe not yeah. the exact team leaders, but guys I knew who raised for the, the groups who were at the National. And uh, to be honest, yeah. the feedback was great and I actually yeah. had to say to them, no, sure. Tell me what you didn't like. I, You've I sort of got to do it anonymously, I think. Mm. Well, what I said. You want to speak to Danny? You, you want to well, speak I to said, Danny? Let him do his survey, monkey. They were okay because I said, You tell me, and I don't care what they think. Literally, mm. I don't. And I just fed mm. it all back as I didn't say, you know, I'll tell you the people who gave us good feedback or um, any kind of feedback. Tony F. Doka, uh, Nathan Rawls, um, I can't remember who's the fella, but. But you've got to ask where I always said that you've got to ask them something. They go, no, tell me what, tell me what didn't go right. Mm. And then if you already knew, like Southport, oh, sorry, it looks filled up too quickly. Mm. You go, well, that's right. You, um, actually, we had complaints about the sound, but, mm-hmm. but we had drivers complaining that they couldn't hear it. Right, right. So, you know what I mean? So you're sitting there going, well, that's that. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, the food van, our food van left at four instead of six. You know what I mean? You've yeah, to, yeah, you, yeah. You've just got to take it and go, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, they're good points there. Thanks very much. I, I, yeah, I think I, and anybody who knows me, uh, knows I'm, I am very guilty of taking things very much yeah. to heart. Cause yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, but, that, but it's only because I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I'm so conscientious about it. Um, yeah. That's... I, I look at it and go, that's that's not a personal attack on me. I'm not that soft, but I just think, oh, you know, the effort that went in to that yeah. weekend and the weeks beforehand, you know, me and Alex sitting up at sitting up cutting numbers out. You know, nobody yeah. sees it, do they? They don't <laughs> no, see us getting all the raffle prizes. My office is, is usually piled eyes with boxers 
for each meeting, all numbered, all ready to go. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, they don't see the effort James Alliwell puts into the preparation yeah. of that meeting. You know, you when 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 Matt turned up, I bet uh, I'm sure it was probably Friday. Um, mm-hmm. It just looks like a festival site when you get there, doesn't it? It's oh, all ready to go. Damn it, mate! I, ready I to was go. blown away all weekend. I think that was apparent. It was. By, and by the barn, far and away. I mean, the barn's fantastic, isn't it, for picking oh, it? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, every, every bit of it. 240 um, volt in the barn. Um, the, 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 oh, obviously, you got the, the beer, t- beer thing that was going, you know, you could get a drink in the evening on the Saturday, the band, the, yeah. the racing, the different events, the, um, the oval, the enduro, the vintage race, the kids race yeah, with you, the wives and girlfriends. You, you, no, we, we we made the, wags one, the wags one up was quite funny because that we made the wags one up on the on the spur of the moment. But anyway, yeah. like we we do tend to roll a little bit like, like that. But yeah, you just uh, yeah. So anyway, just to wait. I mean, I'm, I appreciate there's seventy people. I think now seventy people responded, and there was only sixty eight last year, and that's seventy eight on one day. And yeah. I've not had to chivvy anybody up yet. So you know, it's great that they've responded, and and ninety odd percent said that the meeting. Um, uh, I can't remember what the first question was, Matt. It's something like, did it fulfil your... Yeah. Um, did it meet your expectations? You know, did it meet your expectations? And it's somewhat like low 90%. So, I mean, you, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, why is it not 100%? But, you know, uh, you're never going to please everybody all the time, are you? No, so, you're not. You're not. You know, no, and, 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 uh, and you get your feedback of the people who tell you, well, that didn't happen. And you go, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's quite interesting, and not that I'd ever release the information, but I can I can sort of tell who they are, and uh, yeah, you think, oh, uh-huh, you're right, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, hope, okay. I hope my one was apparent enough for you to know which one was mine. Yours was, I can tell exactly what yours is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yours was absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, and you weren't the only one to uh, comment on a certain aspect, but <laughs> we actually had more of those there this year than we've ever had. And they still managed to uh, yeah, I don't destroy know. them. So I what can know. I? Well, I'd, you know, you can't. Not strangers' fork, is there? You know, no. what I mean? as, no, as, as long as you took that in the jokey way that I meant it, rather oh, than of it course. being. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. We knew. Well, I say we knew. I didn't actually know until I've started getting these responses back because, of course, I had my caravan there, so I didn't go anywhere near one. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really realise. I just thought, oh, great, we've got loads more portaloos. Unbeknownst to me, people can't hit the target. So, no, you know. No. no. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, again, Joe, um, we've that, got, that got was a back very onto small. This again. Yeah. <laughs> we are. It's my fault. Um, How quickly we just said. You know. No, no, James. Uh, I can No, so uh, how's uh, one last question before we let you go to bed? Um, yeah. How, how's the year been? How's your racing year been? Uh, well, it hasn't finished really yet. I've got a very high pressure weekend this weekend. Oh, you know? it's your big weekend. Well, it, it, no, don't say that because that just <laughs> really puts the tin yeah, out. Yeah, of course it is. This is Damo's oh, biggest race weekend of the year. I forgot about it. Yeah, it all really depends on who turns up. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? On the day. Yeah. Um, but I believe Ellis Stafford isn't going, so there's, there's one oh, place. Yeah, well done. Um, and Lawson's not going, so there's another place. And I very Kev much Lee doubt going. Stelling will turn up. Who? What about Kev Lee? I doubt it. No, he's on, he's holiday. on holiday. Yeah, he's, he's on, on holiday. holiday. Wow, there's another place. Um, I don't know how old Eugene Galley is. Anyone know how old Eugene Galley is these days? No. Um, Everyone knows. on about going, but I've not broken, to, broken it to him yet that it's darts or ballistic spikes. And I think right. he was he was dead set on running mini spikes, which you can't actually <laughs> run. <laughs> No, so can't. that's that's probably Stu not not so actually this, probably this going. Is, I keep forgetting um, to tell him actually. This is for your vintage and juniors race at Bronx, though. Vintage, <laughs> vintage veteran. <laughs> yeah, I know. Flipping chicken, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I think actually vintage is newer than veteran, isn't it? In the old yeah. car game, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have got the vets uh, um, at Brockstall, and me, me and Mrs. Whittle are staying in the Eastwood Hall, don't you know? Yeah, oh. we're having a, 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 a we're having a weekend away. Um, nice. And then, and then after the week after, it's Ulverston. Yeah, it is, mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Have you booked so, in? Yeah. Okay. No, no, just because. I've no Jones, idea mate. where it is. It's close. It's Apart like from Ulverston. Yeah, and remember, we get to Ulverston before we get to Barrow. Oh well, that's a good thing. 
yeah, that's that's a good thing. I don't think yeah. I went last year. Oh, no, I, I didn't go last year because it was, it was. It's I was a new doing track. split I've regions, been... weren't I? I've seen the pictures. It looks good. It looks really good, and I've heard quite a good few reports from people or anecdotally saying it is actually looks pretty good. To be fair, yes. Uh, and I think you know there is a bar there. I'm camping over on the Saturday night. Mm. You're oh, camping I'm... over, did you say then? Yeah, on Saturday night. Yeah. Are you really? Right, okay. Yeah, I've, I've got a twelve pound fifty tent from Tesco. That'll be good if it rains. Well, I'm going to put it under the big blue tent. Um, <laughs> but it, the poorly. first, the first tent that Aiden bought off of Amazon, he's he was so chuffed because he bought this tent for like. I, I don't know, t- 89p. You know, three three mm. man ten, 89p. And I mm. said to him, have you, uh, have you read the reviews on that tent there, Aiden? He said, no, oh, no. And then he so I'll go and check them out. So he posts us a couple of the reviews on the chat thread that we've got. And one of them said, this was a remarkable tent. How they've managed to create a material that allows rainwater to pass through it like thin air. <laughs> Is beyond me. I was, I was quite amazed to feel the Brilliant. rain on my skin. No, so, so I've got a tent. slightly better tent, twelve pound fifty. <laughs> well, bar. you know, it's got a bar. It's got it's showers. So yeah. what think, the tent has for twelve pound fifty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Barrow has. Yeah, um, right. and then the I think the idea is that I'll hate mm-hmm. it so much camping for just one night. Then it remind me that I'll never go camping again, mm. and I'll just keep buying the travel lodge. I think you just need to yeah. be shocked back into remembering yeah. how bad yeah. it is to camp in a twelve pound tent. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't do a tent anymore. Um, I'll be, I'll be whizzing up the motorway in the morning in the new chuckle wagon. So, <laughs> right, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, Overston. That sounds interesting. I didn't know there were a bar in overnight camping. That that's sounding even better and better, uh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, uh, bar overnight. It's like next to the it's next to the social club, mm. the Glaxo Smith kind, whatever social club. Mm. So that's the, Is it a bit like Phoenix Nights? Is there a turn on? I, I, I believe that. I don't. I'm not. I can't promise what. Right. Uh, really, but I think it is one of those places where there might be bingo. Oh, absolutely awesome. Can you imagine <laughs> if we all rocked up for a series meeting and all just went in there? They'd love us. They'd love us. Yeah. Dan, what you want to do? Just think this of is... the turnover that weekend that they'd get from us. Like Damo, this, is, <laughs> this is why you want to do it at Mendip. The, the bingo down there is 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 uh, at the caravan park. That's where that's where we all went yeah, on the uh, I know, but I Friday need a little, night. I'd need a caravan for me, and, for me and Lady Whittle. That's the problem. Well, couldn't you just bring yeah, your she's caravan? She's not very really keen on sharing with Northby. Could, haven't you got a caravan no. that you could bring? I have a caravan, and I'm not towing it all the way down to Somerset. Yeah, bring it down, you'd be all right. Oh, God. Oh. It takes me... How long did it take you to get back, man? You were... What, from Robin Hood? Yeah. Uh, oh, um, well, driving at the speed limit, it probably took me four, four hours. I mean, we did it in mm. three and a bit, but... Um, very very easy trip back we stopped once when I think we just got a bit bored to be honest Yeah, I think we literally yeah, just yeah. got a bit bored and went sod it so we just yeah. stopped for a drink and we stopped 10 yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. fag drink and then just smashed it all the way back and it was it was dead easy on the way home it was the way there that was a killer for us yeah well it, yeah it, it, it yeah, Friday travelling is never good, to be fair. But um, and worst weekend for it. It's the first weekend of the uh, summer holidays, wasn't it, for the kids? So the worst... well, it depends where you are in the country. I mean, they've been off on holiday up here for yonks. Oh, in they... Scotland, they're going back next week. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, regarding Ulverston, uh, they work on a different got... equinox, I think. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, regarding Ulverston, they've got you know they've got a bar and showers, and I've even said to them, "Well, there's a lot of pressure on this region. They best do it right." <laughs> because to be honest, I'm going to have a massive hangover. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you yeah, so you won't be wearing your blue high. Well, you will be wearing your blue high vis. You'll just be a bit useless. Oh, yeah, I'll just be in my sleeping bag wearing it. Who's running race control? Any idea? They oh, I don't know. They've had a person I've never heard of doing it, but she seems to be 
doing quite well. I've not heard any mm-hmm. issues. Oh, well. We'll uh, soon find and, out. And they've also got uh, Stu Jones will be there as well. So, for yeah. the regional. Right. So, that, yeah. and, 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 of course, Eric's going, so... Right, super well. Eric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it should be good. So, yeah, two more race meetings left. And then it's um, then it, then I might do a couple of club days and then I'm off on holiday. For, oh, okay, so nice, that's fine. That's so yeah, it, yeah, all good. It, so we'll see what happens this weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, mate. No let, us know, let us know how you get on. Take loads of photos. I feel like it's gonna be if it's gonna happen, it's gonna be two wheel drive. It's not gonna be four wheel drive. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> I have a send... feeling I might I might be carrying a bit of a handicap there, but anyway, <laughs> I, I'm gonna what you call it. I'm gonna send uh, Alex some messages on uh, Saturday morning about eight o'clock. Going, just tell him, you know. Skeldings, on, you've just seen Skelding in the toilet. No, but no point flipping texting Alex because she'll be still in bed because she's staying at a hotel literally round the corner. Oh, in the Hall. right, okay. It's literally so, next door. Is Lee Fraser old enough? Lee Fraser isn't old enough. He was going to come down and pit for me until I told him how much the hotel was, and then I think he freaked out a little bit. All right, so you're by yourself? No, I'm Mrs. Whittle. Yeah, but uh, actually on the race day. Oh, yeah. You're just Yeah, oh, just okay. me. I, so if you, if you, I was on my own when I won it. Right, okay. So definitely, if you're on the juniors of X, go find Damo uh, and loosen the wheel of his lossy 22 points. Have you got 22.4? <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, I, I'm sure you're building it as, you, as you're speaking I, now. It, yeah, it's just sat here in a box. Obviously. Yeah, in a box. Right? I mean, so, ob- well obviously, with, with the support that you get from from the team you being, being a team guy you, you would have had one sent to you as first you know as soon as they came out as from from what i understand but um yeah so i, I yeah. mean I, i've certainly enjoyed beating it at the weekend yes yeah no <laughs> um yeah i um i think um i think my wonderful idea to run ballistics wasn't the best in the end and it and uh yeah probably should have been on darts from the start um, yeah, well, let's, let's put that down to organisational fatigue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I always put it down to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're having a crap day, uh, it's because I'm busy running around like a mad fool. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's it. Um, yeah. And you know what? I think I said to you, didn't I, Matt? It absolutely felt minted last leg at C final, whatever yeah. it were. I even gave my third place up to Scott Broadbent because for some reason the system did the count back wrong. Yeah, so uh, okay. Yeah. It counted a four and a three better than a five and a two for some strange reason. I don't know why. Because um, oh, we, we didn't only have Muzzy there doing race control, who, by the way, <clears throat> was the, is just, you know, I know we've got Eric, and I love Eric to bits. Uh, Muzzy is mustard at running a race meeting. Oh, yeah, he was you can, super. I could, we could not do the international without Muzzy being there. And his wife was literally days away from having a baby. So big, wow. big, uh, big thanks to Muzzy uh, yeah. and, and my and my Oople squad. To be fair, they mm-hmm. they all mm-hmm. they all pitch in in their own way, or I make them one way or another. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it seems like a good group. Seems like a good group. All right, mate, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll let you go to bed. Yeah, no worries, guys. Thanks for the thanks, uh, involving me again three times. That's there me. Uh, that's me winning into it. That now I'm winning most, now. Uh, most popular. Three times. Yeah. Most yeah. most popular guy. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and if you win next, if you win next weekend, we're not having you on. We're only oh, having right. you on if you've got an epic story of defeat. Because really, so you won't yeah. have me on if I actually manage to win it again. Of course, course we will. If I lose, of course we'll, we'll have you on all the time. You'll probably not be able to stop me. I'll just Skype into the call <laughs> yeah, anyway. That's it, yeah. I'll do, whoever's on, Neil Craig, yeah, yeah, get off. Flipping Damon's on. What are you on about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neil Craig, European world champion. No, come on, we need Damo on. He's, he's old and he's vintage and he needs to... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't bump Ron Falk again. It's impossible. <laughs> he's a lovely fella, but even he's getting antsy. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, cheers, yeah. mate. You're a superstar. Thank Thanks, you, buddy. All right, guys. Catch you Take later, care, guys. Mate. Bye, See you bye, soon. Bye, bye. Oh, well, that was... I, I haven't even looked up on him yet. Yay! Right, he's gone. There you go. Well, that was super. You know, you can't ask for a lot more from two guests of that sort of calibre, I don't think. Um, Neil Craig and 
Damien Whittle there coming on with us tonight. Um, fantastic to catch up with both of those guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it tonight. How's it been for you? It's been perfect, mate. It's been really good. Um, I, 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 hopefully, people are enjoying it. Please remember to like and share the posts. It really, really does help. And subscribe to us on iTunes. If anyone's having any problems, a few people come to me and go, I can't find it on my phone. Come see us at the race and we'll sort you out and download yeah. you. Make sure you get you linked up to a few of the RC podcasts because there are some good ones out. Because saying that uh, on the podcast that those people can't find is really going to help them. No, <laughs> I, I, they come to me. I will put their. A few people I've actually had to put the podcast on. Um, so a few of the old guys who aren't on smartphones have actually had to email them the web link. Uh, and I've got to uh, say, before we do go, I've got to say it was great to meet. Mike Parker's dad at the weekend as well. He was there right. um, helping Mike run the stall and having a having a few laps himself as well. So uh, yeah, it was really good, really good to meet meet the the extended side of you know Mike number five RC and you know not just Mike's missus and the dogs but but his old man as well. So yeah, it was good good to see all of them there. I tell you what else happened. We should mention the the Glasgow Club. Yeah. a really good event we were in that really good ignition event that looked like a really I said that looked like a really great setup that they'd been built for them I think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to race buggies and show people bug, buggy racing and I think they had some drifting as well yeah, uh, yeah. so well done to the um, Glasgow's or any of the Jockos who... uh, this is the sort of thing we need um, going on is, is events and shows like this where we can get it get it out there um, and didn't we have something from that Chris Mills, uh, Millsy Boy RC or whatever his page is, uh, is called? Um, Chris Mills sent us something about the Swansea Club. Have they moved or have Cardiff, they got some... Cardiff. Cardiff, that's it. Cardiff Club. Hang on a the minute. Cobra lot. I think they've sorted out a brand new permanent, I think it's Astro, yeah, indoor venue that they can use every week and the Astro's already down or the surface is Astro. Yeah, there's a, a few guys. I think we might get them on for five or ten minutes next week or something like that. I think they haven't actually raced there yet, but you know, go and support. That looks like a great venue. And as you said, not too far from you. No, not a million miles from me. Um, yeah, just over the bridge, really. It's an hour and a half, possibly, from where I am. Maybe yeah. a little bit more. Um, but not yet. Yeah, about the, a little bit further on from getting from here to Bristol, so it's, it's not not too bad. Uh, yeah, but we've um, also got the Cows series at Caldicott, Caldicott Off-Road Winter Series, the Cows, I think it's works yeah. out too. That one, that one's in there, that's coming up, and we've, of course, got Torbay as well for for the Winter Series down here. But, you know, before all that kicks off, got, mate, we've got regionals ending, we've got the end of season Fs, 2s, 3s, 4s and 5s, we've got the... Juniors and Vets finals coming up this weekend at Brox. It is this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it's this weekend. This yes. weekend at Brox, though, yet. Yeah. So, uh, all you old fellas will be down there doing your thing. Um, Hoping other fast old fellas don't turn up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there, there's still lots going on for the, for the last bit of the summer season. And I think for the last couple of years, September's been quite a good month for racing outdoors yeah, for us. It's, yeah. We've had that late sort of uh, boom Indian of dry summer. weather that comes through. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we've still got a, another bout of heat and dryness and lovely outdoor. I'll stray to race on for the next month or so. But um, And I'll tell you what else, in the group, I'm just going to say it's Neil Thompson, who's um, the new Bedworth on-road club. Yeah, you know they had to move and they've rebuilt themselves a venue that looks great if you're into that kind of thing. But you know Neil's always on the group. Um, he's, he's told us about that. I know he met, put something on today regarding the, the opening event that they're having. So if you're around Bedworth and you're like on road, go and go and see that venue out. Um, they sort of rebuilt that from nothing. I don't think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know um, how much we love our on-road. Yeah, we do. We love we love a bit of on-road, mate. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a great laugh. But you know, some of the guys I want to say hello to from the from the international that that I, I, 
you know, just off the top of my head that I can remember, obviously I went up with Chris Busby, it was good to have him as company. Danny mm-hmm. James, good to catch up with him up there. We have Rob Hancock and Mark Hancock. Um, you know, there are the, Trev Hale came up with us. Jimmy. Um, yeah, Jimmy was there. Jimmy was in the B final with me, which was, which was pretty cool. Um, but there, you know, there were, there, there, there were loads of people. You, so, so many people at the Invernational that I met and, and knew and just had a chat with for the first time and, and came across. Obviously, Mark Christopher and Lee Stokes were up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he, oh God, you know, you know, so, so many people. I wish I could say hello to all of them, but. We had we had some great fun in the finals. I think I've raced Jim Dixon in the, I think I raced him in the B final as well in the international. And we we've had some really close races a couple of times this year. Me me and Jim Dixon. Um, mm-hmm. So it was good, you know, good to see him up there as well. But all, all of you guys that were there last weekend, it, it was brilliant to catch up with you all, and it was it was great to see. You. And ho- hopefully, I'll be catching up with you all at next year's Opal events and the International again even if it is earlier in the year but I think from me and you mate we should call that a night or a day whenever you're listening to this and sign off until next yeah, week yeah cheers mate yeah thanks for your time no worries uh, no worries man thank you for your time and thank you everybody for listening and I'll uh, speak to you all soon and don't forget to like and share the podcast I know Aiden always forgets to ask you all to do it, but yes. um, do remember to like it, share it, spread the word. That's, that's what we're doing this for. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Take care, everybody. We will catch you all next week. Yeah, cheers, mate. Take it easy, buddy.